What's good, y'all? Siana Maria here, and I am at Unspoken ATL. Shout out to them for having me, and um, I'm going to share a few pieces of my soul with you today. So this first song I call The Secret, and it's like my hype song, so. Like, let me talk my shit, you feel me? Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. Listen, yeah. I'm a black musical prodigy, I write these songs like prophecies There's magic in my pen, I write things into my reality That's not step to me or you get folded like you origami Got the universe and ancestors, they right beside me Divinely protected, love respected, bitch I'm godly Heart, body, mind, soul is a line, yes I love all of me Show love to every living being, good karma comes to me Live life with gratitude to reach that cosmic energy Show love where you go Show love, oh, oh. Show love where you go Show love, oh, oh. Super honored, man. Shout out Nigel. Shout out everybody here. Shout out Unspoken. We in the A. Shout out to my boy G. That's what we drinking on. G. The Readers. Make sure y'all get y'all some G. The Reader, man. Hit my boy up. For real. We record. Are we live? Yo, yo, yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to the Unspoken Atlanta Podcast. I'm your host, Nigel Armani. I am Snow J. It's the kid, BMX. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man! Episode eight, man. Welcome back. Episode Welcome eight. Back. Damn. Episode eight. We rolling. Oh yeah, we in there. That's just how we, we roll. roll. <laughs> That's how that. How y'all? How y'all feeling, man? How y'all week been going? It's been a long week. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, that ass. It really has been a long ass week. Um, who wanna go first? I'm gonna go first. My week been been real good, man. Um, I think. This week has been kind of special. My mom's birthday was this week. Also, Valentine's Day was this week. Um, how, so how, how was your V Day? <laughs> my V Day was. So you had a bouquet for somebody? Yeah, I did. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, 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 he hit me so, like, hey, what that look, shop you went to? Listen, listen, I've been seeing little shit, <laughs> and I've been peeping little shit, <laughs> and I'm now putting one plus one together. Equal two. It's putting it together. together, I'm peeping. I'm Putting peeping it together. Game. But yeah, it was a good week. My look at him turning red, uh, child. Yeah, turning red, blushing right, shit. You see on, how man. you just... That, you see how yeah, he did we, that? We got to keep it going. Yeah, but it was a good week. Go ahead, go ahead. Good week. 
No, no, no. It was a good week. My mom, mom, mom had a birthday yeah, so last night. Yeah, so we had a birthday party for my mom last night. Uh, she turned 60. That's probably like one of the, the littest 60 year old parties I've ever been to. Your mom a rock star, bro. Yeah, that party sure. was lit. We all were there. It was lit. Yeah. <laughs> That shit was uh, everybody good. came out. We had a lot of um, uh, movie industry people came. Uh, my mom has a kickball league. We a lot of kickball friends. A lot of people that grew up, grew up with me around me that kind of helped raise me uh, along the along the, uh, the years. Um, and it's good to see my my grandmother was still my grandmother still alive. So to have her there, and she was looked dope. good. Yeah. So that was a good that was a good vibe though. So our week was good. Valentine's Day was good. I was I, I was by myself on Valentine's Day, but. I, I I think I put a good impression out there for you know, but yeah. You did good. You did good with the flowers. At his mom's birthday. Yeah, a lot of special guests. What you mean? Okay. A lot of them. <laughs> a lot of special guests in there. We gonna. Told you I put that one plus one together. I was uh-huh. seeing a little few things. Are oh, we talking about Ashley? You just got hit with the side piece shit too now. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about it. <laughs> Hold up. Okay. Like, <laughs> wait a minute. This nigga. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I just thought about that shit. Yo. All right, go ahead. Move along. Don't even worry about it. Go Jesus. Ahead. How was your week, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> um, my week was also, it was just, it felt like a very long ass week. I don't know if it was because Valentine's Day was in the middle of, I don't know, but. Um, my Monday or Tuesday started off crazy. I was chasing a kid out of the school. We had a kid run out of the school that went crazy. Run out of the um, school? Like run yeah. Away. She's a runner. She's a track star. Mm-hmm. I had to. Like, actually physically ran out of the school? Absolutely. Damn. I can't um, take you here. Hmm? Huh? That's what she was saying. I can't take you here. Yeah. So, that was crazy. Um, Valentine's Day was with my girls. I had a good time. Um, so, although you, so you spot, had a Galentine day? I had a Galentine day. Although the spot that we went to was like single bitch only vibes. Like, it was a number of women in there? <laughs> Nothing but women in there. And that there. spot nice. ain't no women based spot. But everybody, clearly the Nick, the, the regulars must have had them some bitches because they damn sure went in there. You know, you're going to go in there, you think you're going to see a, you know, a regular or two. Well, one regular in there was all new faces, never seen them. Um, but outside of that, you know, today, my mom's birthday is actually tomorrow. Mm, um, my girl Aquarius? starts off, she's in Pisces. Pisces. She's when Pisces started? Today. It started today. Yeah, Man. so uh, Pisces season is on the rise. Took my mom out for brunch. My girl will be 72 tomorrow. 72. So we took her out for brunch. She had a good time. Brought her back to the crib. My girl took a shot. Shot of two. You know what I mean? Get my girl with the little tequila vibe. So we had a good time. Today was really, really good. It's just good to... You know, sometimes center yourself with family again, because yeah. sometimes we get so consumed in everyday life mm-hmm. and, you know, don't realize that, you know, your, your your folks is important. And when you get, if your people are still here, it's important to shower them as much as you can, but especially on a, on a special days. So, yeah, my girl had a really, really good time today. Like she, she damn near cried on my, on the way back to the, to the crib. Like I really needed this today. So. You know, making your folks feel good on their day is is always fun. So yeah, I'm I'm feeling like a little nine nine point five. Nine point five. Mm-hmm. What about you, Beasy? How was Valentine's Day for you? Since us single folks here. Well, if you must know, Valentine's Day is every day when you fucking with a real nigga. Uh oh, spicy. Okay. Get it to huh? me. It you. wasn't no different. You know what I'm saying? I I get her flowers all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I get her gifts all the time. Mm-hmm. Every, everything that y'all do on Valentine's Day, I do all the time. <laughs> so it was really no different. We do, but. You know, she uh, she always put the like she'll say something like, "Oh, I like this." Or, or she, anytime we look at the phone, or she looking at something. She said, "I like it." Mm-hmm. I always put a mental note. So I remember she she saw these like gold earrings that she liked. So I was like, on Valentine's Day, I was just like, "Shit, what time you done? Or what time you get a break? I'm gonna mm-hmm. take you somewhere." So on her break, I'm saying I took her to the jewelry store, mm-hmm. and uh, I let her pick out not one but two pair of earrings, <laughs> real ones. Okay. You know what I'm saying? To the gold. Along with, of course, flowers that I always get her. But, uh, yeah, did you went, guys go out to eat? Mm, we do no. we, that shit regular. Yeah, I know. I was just asking. Mm. <laughs> no, so Valentine's Day eateries be a lot anyway, trying to make plans. Yeah, yeah you got to make reservations. Reservations. Be packed out. What? You got to yeah. make reservations for everything. I think yeah. that's like, I think that's like for people who, um, like just not getting into relationships for real, like, yeah, who trying to like make good impressions and shit. That's when you be, that's why everything be packed on there. Like, the people, the people who've been in relationships, they ain't going out for Valentine's Day like that. Some do, but. You know, it's just to, to each his own, whatever. I seen a nigga that did the five senses and his, you know, his little video went viral on social media or whatever. Cute, what? cute. He gave his girl 
five cent like the five senses gifts like touch smell oh, hear okay. That's and he yeah he he set his apartment up had a violinist on the balcony that's creative that's and I think it was like they five year five year ideas. fifth year being together you know oh, women yeah, like he, to be romanced she, and I think she didn't re, she didn't know it's better when you have no clue what the vibe is I think she was under the impression they was just going out for dinner and when she walked into his spot that. this nigga had this bitch decked the fuck out so. Yeah, he 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 did a say. I'm assuming it must be a proposal coming next because he went he went stupid. He went foolish. Is that like giving it away though? No, nah, not really. Um, but the five senses thing is a thing. Like people do that for birthdays. That was my first time ever seeing it. Like Valentine's I'm Day. About when you do like extravagant shit like that, like you feel uh, like I don't you know feel like was... there's something next coming. Maybe, but not for real. I just think he made a a, a, a really a, good, a good you know, conscious effort, mm-hmm. yeah. and it didn't look like he. I think maybe he spent the most on the violinist. Yeah. Like everything else were small yeah. gifts, but he did have a chef in there. They everything was our own. That's hard. So I mean, they didn't go out. He had a private chef, had the violinist. That's what I was plan. gonna do too. Like instead of going out, I was gonna try to have like a private vegan chef come mm-hmm, to the house and mm-hmm, just set up some candles and mm-hmm. eat. But I had waited. It was too last minute. Yeah. But. Yeah. So, I mean, even that, like hey, having a private chef coming in the crib. Hey, that's is your fault. We talked about that last like, week. It is my fault. When you were saying, hey, man, I just, I just, I'm just a spare of the moment, man. I am, but, but some, some things can't I just be can't be like that. No chef. I can't. I know. Yeah. I waited too late. <laughs> I be moving so much, then them days be coming, boy. And that thing, you know, yeah. Valentine's in three and, days. And next and thing like, you know, yeah. it's Saturday. Right. So the, I'm thinking like, okay, I can't really make no extravagant plans. It's too late. So what can I do? I'm thinking like, okay, she okay, she did say she want this or she want that. Mm. So I just, you know what I'm saying, make her happy that way. We love a man that's intentional, though. Oh, and very, a man that pays very attention. Very that's, that's always the best. Let me ask she you may a question. Have... If you had a boyfriend mm-hmm. and he always gave you flowers, mm-hmm. how would you feel about him giving his homeboy's mom flowers for her birthday? I don't care. You gonna care? Mm-mm. And it's an older woman, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm, mm-mm. You gonna feel no way? Mm-mm. No, I don't hell think no. nobody feel no way, especially if they know you. Yeah, no, nah, hell no. Nah. I, I don't give a damn about oh, that. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Hey, and I walk in. Nah, it, it might not be you. There might be some past shit that's got them bringing us for shit. That's got there. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna give your mom flowers for her birthday yesterday. Yeah. But did you think too deep into it? No, just oh. just me being a real nigga and being intentional and just knowing I just communicate. Mm-hmm. So I asked my girl. I was like, yo. Would you mind if I give Naja mom some flowers for her birthday? She gonna say dot 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 dot. I guess it's okay, but the dots told me otherwise. I said, yeah. Nah, I don't worry. I ain't gonna do it because I, I I feel like you don't want to, you know what want me to do this. Yeah. And then she was like, Well, just it's okay. Just don't make it a thing. And by, by her saying all that, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Okay. Then we, we went oh. to eat. Hold on. Before the party, <laughs> we went to eat. And then it, we, it, it came up again. I brought it up. We were drinking the shit, so I started bringing up shit. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, why you gotta? Be, you ain't gotta be like, like you know what I'm saying? She, she's sixty, bro. Like, what? Mm-hmm. And then she like, uh, well, it's just that you get me flowers all the time. Like, you, that's my thing. You know, I never really like flowers from any other nigga. So when you started giving them to me, and I, I actually like that shit. That shit special to me. So I don't want you to give nobody flowers. Mm. Okay. So do that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense too. I just want what you I, feel. But I'm also looking at it like on both sides. <laughs> like, what's the? I don't the, think it's the, that. I, I, I get deep. I get that that's her thing and I understand that, but I don't think that you're coming from a romantic space. Especially as an older woman. Yeah, you're not coming well, from a romantic that, space. She knows that. Right. But I think it's just like like but what she said. Like I think she, we niggas try to give her flowers in the past and she never liked them. Liked I the th- flowers. But I for some reason we, I give yeah. them to her, she love it. And she's just like, that's my thing. That I, I feel special every time you give me flowers. I feel it. I mean, but like like you said though, to each his own, everybody got their own thing, but I wouldn't be upset about that. Yeah. So I, I just want to know, because I was thinking yesterday, like, damn, is it that? Is it really like I don't know. I'm trying to think about like what would be reasons that she would it would be an issue. Like I think we under, like, I think we underestimate people's triggers because I want to understand like her logic. Like now when you, when you said maybe like, it's something deeper behind. Maybe that's something you need to dive deeper into because maybe there is outside of, of course it could be some past shit that, that you know what I'm saying some tra- I ain't gonna say trauma, but you know what I'm saying like something that that might make her uncomfortable. Like because but that's the thing. Give like, her, give she never to, like the way I treat her. No nigga did that. Mm-hmm. Like we always talk about past, like she, you know, the niggas she used to choose, yeah. ain't she niggas to be yeah. honest. Yeah. So niggas never, she had, she never had a real nigga to treat her like a queen all the time, mm-hmm. like I do. So I think it's just this moment for her, just so special. Mm-hmm. She don't want to share. Yeah. She don't want to share it. Like even if it's like older woman or whoever it is, like that's no, nigga, that's flowers is my thing. Let that be my thing. What about? But she didn't make a big deal because she was like, you could do it. But yeah. I could tell by the way she was saying it, yeah, it was a, a problem. It, it, it's yeah. always like, yeah, they'll say, yeah, you can do it. But you could tell by how they say you could do it. 
Well, and, like, you can you can really exactly. Do it. <laughs> and any other nigga probably would have still did it, and then she, she so got that, the, that, that that was exaggeration. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it was like issue. ten dots before issue. she said yeah. 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 <laughs> like nigga, now you know. Mm -hmm. That's all love. But yeah. Hey, if you're an independent artist that's looking for a platform to showcase your skills, looking for an opportunity to shine, perform live from Unspoken Atlanta exclusive performances. Hot spots. I spoke in a lot of hot spots, y'all. Which I got for this week for. Well, uh, I'm the only spots. one that got one. No, I got one. Oh, you do? I okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, hot spots that I have. I have a good friend that hosts um, something at Rocksteady. If you guys have never been to Rocksteady before, I love Rocksteady. I think I talked about it before. The cauliflower is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Rocksteady is just a five. Um, but they have an upstairs. It, it, that depends, man, because it'd be like too much going on. In it there. do. So Rocksteady has an upstairs, and on Sunday nights, they do something called mashups. And, you know, that's a big thing now on TikTok where we get all these DJs going back into the old days where niggas is really mixing songs together and and and, and they were, uh, PD Peter Parker and the other guy, the dude with the dreads. It's it be several different, oh, be different DJs. Okay. Yeah, like I so went to the first one. one like did. Yeah, so they they lit. be having some really good ones. They be having some really good people in there. So on on Sunday nights from seven to twelve, they do mashups. So every Sunday. Every Sunday. That's hard. Um, and you can go in there. You can rock out. I think it's a different DJ every night. And then sometimes they highlight some people. So tonight they have a King Ali. Y'all heard of him? Mm -mm. He's like um, I don't want to call him underground because he's kind of now kind of big, but. He kind of has like that soft indie rap flow type of vibe. I wish I could figure out another person to compare him to, but he's a rapper. Um, and I think he's going to be, maybe he's a a starlight for tonight. I don't know if they're going to be mashing up his music, but he's going to be in the building. But they do different genres of music. Some nights it'd be soca nights and it'd be all like Caribbean music that they'll mash up with different things. R&B nights. Where they match up R&B, mm. so it's a little vibe. I'm gonna go tonight because this be my first time going. That shit um, be I've been vibe. to Rocksteady several times before, and I've also so, been upstairs. It's be your first time going go on a Sunday. Yeah, because yeah. be I always vibe. work. So this week I got off, and I'm excited. To you know, um, Shay was a featured uh, DJ one for one of the mashups. That's when I went mm. to with Shay. Did yeah. It. yeah, and I, Reese did it before too. They probably have. Yeah, Reese has done it before, so I'm excited to see how it go. But they do have different DJs on certain nights. So, That's hard. Yeah. Rocksteady Sunday, seven eight seven p to twelve a. That's hard. Yep. What you um, got, man? My my location is uh just a restaurant. Y'all heard of it probably uh Rosie's Cafe. It's good. I I like it's it's it depends on what you went to. I have a love and hate with them. I used to go to them every day after every what, Sunday after church. Them, um so I so the church that I go to is Impact. Yeah. There's one right across, across from Impact. Yeah, yeah, that's the first one, and now they got one on North Side. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about about this before. Convenience with parking. I <laughs> Yeah. When you inconvenience me with not being able to park, their yeah. lots hey. they usually have very small lots that don't that's not made to accommodate a bunch of niggas. Yeah. If you want to get me to go home, let that parking be fucked up. I'm telling you, yeah. that, that's one the, thing that made me turn. Oh, I got to pay a lot. Oh, you got to pay a lot. Oh, I got to pay a lot. Let me tell you, the night yeah. I go down there on Rocksteady and ain't got no parking, I'm going to the crib. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I, I like the food though. The food, the food good. is good. I like the also like the the atmosphere, like how they got the old st the stuff on the wall. Yeah, like they have the yeah. old people. Yeah, uh, it's uh, cute. It's definitely music. cute in there, and it's it's a nice quaint. Yeah. If you go in there midday, it really yeah, don't be good. nobody in yeah, there. Yeah, you good for me for weekday, but weekdays, like the weekends, yeah. Saturdays. See, I don't want a few for lunch. And Sundays, it's just like ugh. yeah, it's yeah. A, but you're right. During the day, I don't think they really do much. But when niggas are off, yeah, that's when it gets packed. Did, yeah. That one on North Side, they be valeting. And if y'all know where it's at, it's right next to the Mercedes Benz. You know, like you got Mercedes Benz, and there's this it's this little ass lot, mm. and that ain't no lot to be valeting shit. But yeah. Rosie's is a good spot though. They have really good food. So. Rock, it'd be hard to park by Rock Steady too. It do. That's why I say it. Yeah, yeah, if you're in Valet. Yeah, but that the, the hell, the street, baby, that shit. <laughs> we went to Bar Taco. You know, Bar Taco right down the street yesterday. Yes. It wasn't no goddamn parking. But bro. you know you can park. So you know where you can park though. Where? In the apartment complex. Uh -huh. Nope. No, I don't do that no more. Not, not, that, not the one across the street. No, no what? the one. Oh, they broke my shit. Last time I did that, uh -oh. went dead in my truck. So now I try to park on the street. Yeah. 
If not, or do you park? Do you park across where that where that faux spot at? Brick, well, Brickworks is. Is that Brickworks? It's like right across from Bar Taco. Yeah, like diagonal. There's like a whole bunch of stuff over there. Uh huh. Yeah. That's where your shit got broken into. No, it got oh. broken into in what he talking about. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which one? On, on, on those little back streets. Hell on no. The back streets. It's, it's apartment no. complexes, but you can go yeah. in there and you can park on the on the bottom, on the bottom floor. level. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He parked on the bottom yeah. floor. He got. I ain't parked with no back streets. No motherfucking. What them shits called? Parking garage. Them decks. Yeah, they eat your ass alive. They will. And then the crazy shit is, with security guards sitting in the car. But speaking of that, bro, that. I, I seen that on. Uh, was it? Was it Atlanta? What's the other one? Not the shade room, but for Atlanta. ATL though. school. A, no, ATL uncensored. Uh, uh-huh. They um. They know they some neighborhood, that. brand new neighborhood, brand new apartment buildings, it, but it, but it's it's on the west side, I think, in the hood. Twenty five cars got broken. I saw that. Two. I saw that. 25 cars got broken into at a brand new apartment complex. It's really it's really the location, bro. That's what I think it is. You still, yeah. You, you could put you a brand new apartment complex, but you can have that shit surrounded by the fucking... The hood. That, that like the hood goddamn, is like... That like getting a goddamn matter. brand new paint job on your car, but you still got a motherfucking oil leak. Mm-hmm. That's why. You got to fix the inside, too. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you can put some new apartments up, but the motherfucking niggas still over there. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. They going to come through? You ain't going to... Boy, look here. That's crazy. Got to be more careful. Got to be. All right, so I want to do a. Uh, oh, I, I got one. You go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Chelsea's Bakery. Hmm. Chelsea's Bakery. It's a it's a restaurant with vegan options too, but it's like it's a soul food vibe, but it's buffet style where you go in and you you know how they got the food and you look, look through the glass, so you go in there and just pick. T- you make your plate. You tell them what you want. They got mac and cheese, motherfucking green yams, chicken, like all. They got all the soul food shit. I thought got. about you today at the spot that we went to eat at too. I got to tell you about that spot. Tell me about that. Yeah. But yeah, Chelsea's Bakery is on the east side, covered and dry, and they got uh, yeah, basically soul food vibes. Uh, veggie. Chelsea's Bakery is different for soul food. I would just assume it's like a a, a bakery shop. Mm-mm. That's just the name of it. But they got food, food, food okay. for the soul. You did. We love a little soul food. Yeah, all the good shit. I like. I I've gotten to the space now where I like veggie plates from soul food spots. Man, Ain't why I be you. fucking them joints up, Big Daddies? Yeah. Oh yeah, Big Daddies going on. I, I do that a lot of places. I, I just I get like, honestly for Thanksgiving, I don't eat a lot of meats on Thanksgiving. Me either. I, not I, really. I, I, get, I get full the off the sides. sides. Yeah. Most people do. Yeah. Yeah, cause the the the, the meat used to be like yeah. I, this I don't here, really but care for turkey. I don't really care for like you ain't that's chicken. Really, that's chicken. Ham. Yeah. You eat it every day, like yeah. That, the size is really what make the plate anyway. Yeah, them sides go off. Entrepreneurship highlight for anybody that's that's in Atlanta that's familiar with the kickball culture in Atlanta. Um, honestly, it was started by my mother, um, which she owns uh, Sweet Lady Kickers. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sweet Lady Kickers opening day. I'm Cassandra, the founder. I'm so proud of all the ladies. We have 12 awesome teams and 240 women plus. Didn't stop at 240. We kept going, but. So proud of all the ladies that came out and joined our league. This is our opening day. We want you to enjoy yourselves. We want you to come out next year and sign up with the Sweet Lady Kickers. Also, we're having our first summer league, which starts in August, and it goes through to the 1st of October. Thank you so much, and I love you guys. Come out and become a Sweet Lady Kicker. Every Sunday from... What it is, Joe? Maybe like 2010, maybe to about like maybe 19. Every summer, she would have like a pretty much a kickball league. She don't do it no more. 
she stopped it after COVID. COVID is what it was what kind of like killed it for her, cause she was starting. It was it was too much stress, and then she, what she what it takes to do it. She was doing everything herself, but uh, she had to really. She really started. She pretty to me. That was the first. She was the first person I seen actually have a kickball league, and it was actually popular. Like every Sunday, uh, Gresham Park was packed. <laughs> she got every. She got. She go there. She got. Uh, she got all of them rented out, so it's it's games on every field. Um, and if anybody from Atlanta know, you know Gresham Park is like one of the biggest, you know, mm-hmm. parks that not biggest, but it's like it's just notorious. It's, it's been there for a long time. Um, a lot of people don't play football there, baseball there, growing up. Um, so that was that was one of the best spots about it. But um, a lot of times now I'm looking at it now, the landscape of it, now a lot of people are starting to like make leagues, kickball leagues. It's the, well, it's it's been popular, but I don't, it's it's popular because of her. But I've seen like a lot of like people like how they doing it now. Like it's, they trying to make it like co-ed. For her, it was different. It was just all women. It was all women, but you had male coaches. Oh okay. Um, and she had like she each year I think she had like ten teams. Um, and I I I'm I got video too. I'm gonna put it on the screen while, as we talking. But it was just a vibe out there. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her. She she um. Did it for ten years, and she kind of took a break. I'm trying to talk to her into starting back because she's been getting a lot of um, uh, feedback on like people trying to do a, a, a not a short film, but like a TV series around it. Mm. Um, and so I just, in my personal feeling, I've been telling her that she need to start it back up to kind of like keep that momentum kind of going. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to SLK. On that one, that's um, hard. Shout out to that. Shout out to moms. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Super Bowl happened. Um, it did. If, it, if, if y'all didn't know, Chiefs uh, won Chiefs, again. Chiefs done won three Super Bowls in the last five years. Fuck. Well, they won back to back too. And they nah, won back to back. Chiefs didn't win. Oh, Atlanta won. Atlanta won. You yeah, right. you talking about? You right? Because I was for it. <laughs> I was for Usher anyways. Though. Atlanta won. So what's y'all thoughts on the, how y'all like the halftime show? What was y'all thoughts on the vlog? I thought it was so nostalgic. I think it was great. I think it, it really put Atlanta on the map for we just we we really have forever always ran on our own time. We ain't never tried to conform ourselves to what all the other coasts been doing. LA, we know for a fact in hip hop history, New York was the first to to bring that in. LA was Cali was then next. And then Atlanta came, you know, Outcast and all of them. They came in with this whole new sound you know a new southern twang then houston shortly followed after us then florida but like you atlanta is just it's just a staple and usher was able to bring a super bowl that was seen by millions and billions millions of people i won't say billions but it's, millions it's the, the, high, it's it's the, the highest view one. Yeah. yeah and he brought I, 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 he, they say that every year though they do it's like it, it climbs like they said about rihanna rihanna was the most oh yeah now which would put you maybe probably was though. now this year i think it probably topped it. yeah but it's just yeah. like you know this nigga usher still found a way to incorporate atlanta like the stripper pose that wasn't even that wasn't mm. that wasn't exotic but and the, the, and the skating was there and, and, and the skating and the skating yeah um, I enjoyed it. I I literally turned into an entire fan. Like yeah. I screamed the entire halftime show. He did 15 minutes versus the 13 minutes that they're usually allotted for the halftime show. So imagine two minutes added on to that show was great. Um, Alicia Keys, her, hey, Lil John, Ludacris. Twin did his big one. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, I love that shit, right? But I'm just mad as hell he didn't do Lovers and Friends, bro. I know. And you know I what? Know. You know what? He could. And he really didn't do that many pop songs. No, he didn't do "Lovers and Friends" because it, the Beyonce on that. No, that's the no. Other one. no, no it's it's the friends is Lou, Lou, Lou and, and, and Lil I mean about the remix to. Uh, no, she is on the remix to "Lovers and no, Friends." No, she, no, she, no, she not. Ain't no remix. No, she got a remix with. No, Usher. not that song. That's until the end of time. Uh, love in the, the club. club. Yeah, that's my love in the club. I'm talking about "Lovers and Friends." Yeah, yeah. And if you ask me, they could have kept that Alicia shit and and put "Lovers and Friends" in that spot. In the beginning or something. Like my boo, yeah, we really didn't need my boo. We ain't, we ain't need that. Yeah, I'll, and she I'll did crack when the first solo song. Part. We ain't need that. I ain't, and if I ain't got you, it's commercial, bro. I didn't like. I what I didn't like was I guess the two minutes that they did do. Like Lil John did turn up for what I could have left. Y'all could have left that off, and you also could have left off if I ain't got you. With but then if you're gonna take it out, how are you going to introduce Lil John? That's don't you don't have to. But he's a part of it though. He. He's it's, in that. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, though. like we didn't need their so song. If, if that case, then you say something for Lucas. 
Huh? You said the same thing for Ludacris? No, Ludacris didn't come with no intro. Lil John had his whole, he had his own intro, like turn yeah. down for what? Dun, 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 dun. Commercial. No, that wasn't no commercial. No, commercial. I wasn't mad at that. No, no, no. When, I, when I'm saying I commercial, wanna... I mean the reason why he's on there. Same with Alicia Keys commercials. There, for the white people, Lil John is play at every beach club. He is. And, and every, you know what I'm saying? The white people love him. So, the white people love him, the white people love Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. That's why you put them on there. It's like you, go, you can have your, like, it's like, for instance, next year we're talking about Lil Wayne, right? Lil Wayne ain't gonna have nobody on no, that no, doing no, that. No, what I'm saying though is they how it really should be. It should be a New Orleans halftime show, but because they are gonna make a commercial, they are gonna say it need to be Nicki and Drake and Lil Wayne versus it need to be. Yeah, really and then it, it ain't even enough New Orleans stars, nigga, no, to make a halftime show. Shoot, he, Shit, who ain't who? Who? nigga? Shoot, you got big timers. You got you got Lil Wayne. You got Master P. Come on, dog. You, it's, it's ways you can go about. For thirteen you can, you, minutes, you, you it's make, enough you niggas in New Orleans for that. New Orleans. And if Mystical really if Mystical get out, put them on there too. Well, yeah, 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 But see, yeah, yeah. you gonna but see the commercial yeah, okay. yeah. side is gonna be like, it's gonna be Lil Wayne headline, and then you can have Drake and Nicki Minaj. Uh, like, that's how they gonna that's how they gonna want it because uh, that's what the white people gonna want. Uh, but the white folks like like white folks like Lil Wayne. But like white people don't like Master P. Well, that's what we talking about, Master P. I'm just saying like. But who? I mean, right. well, he the second one. If, no, no, if no. Not, we talking about cash money, if, if, when I talk about Lil Wayne. No, Master P was Orleans. never in cash money. No, no, I'm saying. But when I talk about Lil Wayne, I think of Hot Boys. That's the only niggas I'm juvenile and all them. That's who I would New want Orleans, you to associate Lil Wayne with. I agree with you, but if you're gonna make it a New Orleans halftime show, then you he, thinking if that it's, if it's not cash money, it's no limit after them. But that's a it's fact. really it really should be no limit was first, then it was cash money, but. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying, yeah, saying. I get what you're saying, yeah. but when you, if you're speaking of Lil Wayne, you're not gonna associate Lil Wayne and Master P together. You're gonna associate Hot Boys with Lil Wayne. So if they do new, if they do so a I mean, New Orleans halftime show, it needs to be everybody that's associated with Lil okay, Wayne. But, yeah. No, no, not Master no. P and all them. Just everybody's associated with Lil Wayne. Was that mean but commercial? I thought, that mean Nicki and Drake. Fuck them. You get what I'm saying? Dude. That's what they're going to ask for. If you, it's, you, you can't have it both ways. If you want to have a real New Orleans halftime show, or you're going to have a Lil Wayne commercial <laughs> halftime show. Rihanna ain't had nobody. Right. Well, you gonna, or you can let Lil Wayne go by himself. He can they do not it by gonna let Lil Wayne go by himself. He can do it by himself. He, he, can, he, got, he got more hits than anybody, but yeah. they they not going to let him do it by himself. I don't know. So how did y'all feel about, you know, it was a lot of buzz um, in regards to the Usher. You know, they don't. Yeah. They just won't let my boy live. You know what I'm saying? They just be trying to say he just is womanizer and bullshit. Woo -woo. How did y'all well, feel has, about... Well, he has a history. So we can't... Be, just like last week when we talked about Dre, he got a history. So we can't ignore... A history ignore of what? With, 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 with messing up relationships with people. Who? Kiki Palmer. Nigga, that's uh, her insecure ass boyfriend. Man, but because of him, my, every, I, I look, still don't though. even agree with the I think Kiki Palmer, but she's look, my though. age. We all grew up on Usher. I would have been fangirling too. She didn't even do anything remotely as close as what Usher and Alicia Keys did. Hey, man. Usher was grinding up behind Alicia. Yeah. No, that's, that's different. <laughs> but but what? What, what, what I'm saying, but it's different. But what I'm saying is after Kiki made everybody that's famous that's in a couple. You bring your significant other with you, cause I'm not finna let you go by yourself. I don't give. A, I I I. That was a lesson. My nigga could have been standing. You still with it? You still with it? I'd have been fangirl. Mm -hmm. It's Usher. I grew up on Usher. Yeah, but it's different. Like it's, it's different. Usher, it's different when you in that industry. It's though. not different. I could have. I wasn't. I wasn't in the industry when Usher first came out. It's like it's, I am my way, nice and slow. I was a fucking jit, and I remember those songs being put in the main TV shows. If anybody remembers, Nice and Slow was on Sister Sister episode, and my was. girl Tamara was was it Tamara? He was on Tamara that, right? was yes. Yeah. T Usher was on Moesha. Yeah. Moesha, yeah. You like as a young girl, you were fanning over Usher. Usher was just that he was. He, so of course, he was older what you're than us. Is, but... As a male, because Usher just let him have fun with you. Yes, because you niggas, if Megan Good was in the fucking spot and she giving lap dances for free or want to shake her ass most in front of you, you gonna do it. And most women would be in their feelings. I wouldn't. That's you. But ninety percent of women would be in. Their Megan feelings. Good is a heartthrob. She's a nineties heartthrob. Usher was a nineties heartthrob. Like Usher is a performer. I even Chris Brown. So to me. If Chris Brown had a Chris so Brown cool, was taking so, so, inappropriate so, so, no, pictures no, no, with bitches no, no. behind the no, stage. No, no, no. So as a male, I'm supposed to be okay that my girl spend a thousand dollars to go take a picture with Chris Brown. Huh? 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 I should feel okay. <clears throat> should, no, yeah. should, no, 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 shit. I feel okay. You should. Okay. If you want to go and supervise, fine. Be back there in the back. Man, but I'm gonna take this on, picture man. with you Chris Brown. And I'm gonna be like, that thousand dollars is corny, bro. For you to even feel like you need to pay that. 
if they're a Chris Brown fan, right. they're going to do it. I'm saying, but I'm not, if I'm in a relationship with you, I like, don't in the back give of my a mind, fuck. This, my this is not even. You act like this is something that could. You act Come like on, this bro. could go somewhere. Like Kiki Palmer, and she is. 15, well, we know this, it still don't matter, but she might be 15 years younger than Usher. But you, Usher is a performer. He's right. going to give the show. Did nobody say shit about Taraji when she got her ass up there and danced to Bad Girl? And it was dancing. Taraji don't got no man. She could have had one. You don't know that. She was her nigga just may have never said nothing. All right. she, he probably did say something. But, but Darius, Darius was insecure about that because Darius ain't no mainstream ass nigga. And you know Kiki Palmer is a bitch in the head. I just feel like any nigga would, would have been upset. But no, no. That's how let's, you go about no, it. No, let's compare. At least he's a Swiss beast. What Swiss beast said? My nigga's in the industry. I'm right. dancing with Usher. I'm fine. Okay. If you put the comparison of Kiki Palmer and Darius, Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats, so the difference me, is me both of them are in the industry. Kiki Palmer nigga is not in the industry. Well, let me ask you this, though. You I would, agree. Okay, I, I, I can take a point of that. But, but where do we draw the line? What's the... Ki no, no, when, want, do, but no, when, uh, when do we say uh, it's okay no, no, and when no, no, it's not okay is what I'm asking. While we're talking about this, I want you to put both clips up here and tell me the difference between Alicia Keys as a married woman and what she did with Usher versus Kiki Palmer, who's not married and did nothing. No, with, no, no, no. She did I'm, nothing overall, with Usher. I'm just saying overall, she did, though. Have y'all seen the clip? She did I nothing mean, with no, Usher. No, she did nothing wrong. She didn't dance on him. I don't have an him. issue with it. She didn't do nothing. I don't have an issue with so her So there was no with. reason for, for, that, for that flag to be as big as what it was. Now right. Alicia Keys is married, and you know they did the little boo scene. He grinding up behind. I don't care about either way, but I'm saying niggas really knocked Kiki Palmer head off. Now I'm finna make a parody out of this shit. I'm finna be funny since y'all think that was such a big. <laughs> I'm finna make more money out of it. They made the whole boyfriend song through their little shade at Darius. Now you look even more corny for making this bigger than what it needed to be made. Hey, hey, I'm fellas. having a girls' night with the girls. We hey, having a fellas, good time. This, this, is, this, this is why you don't tell your girl everything. When you got an issue oh, with something... Oh, my motherfucker. When you got an issue with something, you, you, got, did, you keep it to yourself. Also, but he also didn't keep go Keep it to, to yourself. Because as soon as you express Darius, that you feel a type of way... Or you, or you, or Darius you, didn't if, if you say don't nothing like to her, though. He went public. You're you not going to win. He went public. That's what he fought up at. He went public. He went public. That's what he fought up at. That public shit. That Instagram... And now you and now you look like a simp. I gotta look at it both ways. Though. No, hey, he, he go public, right? But you also Stop gotta being... look at the people that's probably DMing him. Hey, your girl got her ass out. You know how I many these DMs probably loaded. Now I gotta ignore them. I gotta also hold my pride in. Bro, you not say listen. Nothing. You not finna tell I'm me. Just saying, as you a, you not finna tell me as a woman though. in a relationship. You not gonna hit your nigga up before you go to the concert and show him what you got on. That nigga knew what that bitch had on when she left. If, if you're in a relationship, you're definitely gonna FaceTime your nigga before you go if somewhere. You, if, he seen what she had on. If you on. the breadwinner, you how he much, didn't how, like how the much dress. say do he got? Though? He projected. Huh? How much say does he have if 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 she's the breadwinner? If she say I'm wearing this dress, I'm wearing this dress. You can complain. You ain't going. Okay. Exactly. And then, well, so, so once again, you projected. So you, you really was mad about the dress, but you got your dumb ass on social media and got the fuss about he, he upset. He, I'm telling you, this shit started Go before Go to the next fucking post. topic, please. No. Nah. Hold on. No, 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 I'm just saying it's level two. I'm telling you, I know it, it builds up. It's like, you see me in the picture. Hey, baby, this one I want to see this to, to the Usher concert. Hey, I don't like that shit. Now we got a little argument. He ain't say that. No, I'm just saying we got. I might not say. Nah, he probably said that. He probably, no. he, he probably said some shit like I don't, he ain't I don't shit. like it or whatever. He ain't or, say shit. But what I'm saying is, is building up. Meaning, he could have said he didn't like it. They could have had an argument before he did. So. She, she could have said, "Hey, I'm wearing a dress anyway." Potentially so. Now, but we all know now, that we all know that Usher on that on that damn um, residency. Usher just probably made it explode. But yes, I'm saying the but was Usher, kitchen. Usher at all residencies, he he spoke to all. I'm good. You want, he you did, want a refill? I'm good. good. He did all of the celebrities in there. Yeah, but yeah, my yeah. thing is, Taraji could have been in a whole relationship. And right. she did a... She grinded on Usher. Usher was in a relationship. Did we see anything about his bitch getting on social media and saying, woo 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 No, no Jen Chiller. Thank you. you. Right. So, I, I, I want them to stop that whole trajectory like Usher just be out here doing the most. This man is a... This man speaks to an array of women. He's yeah. a sexy ass 45 year old man that looks the fuck good and speaks to my generation, me being 30 to 31, and then the generation that's within him who came who grew up with him together too. Okay. He fine. I tell a lot about a man by the way he skate. So how do I skate? Uh. 
uh-uh, let's not. Because you're not finna throw shade by some dumb shit like that. Go All to right, the next topic. Uh, so recently, uh, the All-Star Game is this weekend. Um, so the celebrity game was yesterday, which is Friday, was, was this past Friday. Um, and Chris Brown was one of the people that uh, was originally invited. They sent him emails. He also put them screenshots up on Instagram of uh, the emails that the NBA sent him about his jersey and what day they was gonna be doing that. And then um, I guess as the as the day came up, they told him that they no longer needed his services. And uh, uh, Ruffles was one of the sponsors, and that was one of the main reasons why he couldn't come. Um, but so he did a little Instagram post about you know about NBA and Ruffles wasting his time and stuff like that. And then Ruffles came out the next day, pretty much saying that they never said that. He couldn't play, which I feel like is somebody you know, lying. Somebody lying, but um, I guess does your past change your future? I Why guess? did you want let that man live, bro? Like that shit, people grow, bro. Then this man. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I do feel like it's it's in the past, but I feel like, bro, corporate world, they gonna put that on your head for okay. Look, like it's nothing you can do. So like, Chris, Chris keep getting hit with all this shit. He can't even go to a fucking All Star game because of some shit he did with Rihanna. But Dr. Drake can get an impact award and he choked the bitch out. But that, but none of that, st- y'all niggas gotta understand social media and impact social media. When Dr. Drake was beating on Michelle, that shit was not, that's a ledge. There's no proven facts. So when that nigga, so when, it, Rihanna, it, when Rihanna and Chris Brown got in that shit, there were visuals of that. Hey. TMZ was on that shit like white on rice. You said it because it was so broad and put everywhere? Hey, you it know was what, visuals of it. We have no visuals of, of Dr. Dre. Beating on Michelin. Hey, can, can it's we, all. Can we it's dive? All... Can we dive in that real quick? Cause I, I got another. Um... What you got? So I feel like. Well, we know the story. What, what's, what's no, he, he got a reason why he feel like that. No, no. What, what, what well, story we know you got? what the story is. Though. What's your reason? I feel like she was smashing Jay Z, and Chris Brown found out. No, nigga. <laughs> no. Mm-mm. Y'all, it sounds crazy. Well, I mean, Chris Brown told the story. You ain't, you ain't see his documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course you gonna say that. Say what? what? He trying not to get blackballed. Well, he Say already blackballed. Of course, he's not gonna right, bring it so up. So what? So what? So what was he? You're just not trying gonna to bring say? up Jay Z in no documentary at all. You're not gonna bring mm-hmm. it up. You're just not. He's too I'm, powerful. I don't really know about. It. I think. I think it was I'm just a normal. This, I think it was a normal dispute that no, went no, no, too no. far. I think that. I think that uh, Jay Z gave her something, and then and she didn't tell Chris Brown, mm. and he checked both of them about it, and it just went too far with him and her. I don't think that because, because she, if he she, if he checked Jay Z he would no longer well, she, be Chris she, Brown. She, she was signed. She signed to Jay Z. <laughs> yeah, she was. So that's why I feel like I feel like Jay, I feel like Jay Z is really. I mean, I don't. Want, I'm put it out there, but I feel like he like in the room with the with the R Kellys and they was messing with younger women. I feel like Rihanna was somebody that was young, impressionable, probably new. And I feel like the reason why she's so big is because of maybe that interaction they had when she first was coming up. He, he mm-hmm. probably let her hit. So, hey, I'm going to make you a billionaire. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they was well, probably... Well, she's a billionaire they, 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 now because she... I mean, if she would have yeah. stayed with just music, she but probably like, wouldn't be as big. Like, the, like she, he has her back, though. Like, same thing with... I don't think he did nothing with, with Meg, but he has Meg back as well, like, on a lot of shit that she do. But I'm saying, like, initially, like... It's like the, the Diddy and Cassie shit. Like, Diddy had Cassie on every... Outlet, even though he was doing shit behind the scenes, Cassie's no, she's not, she's not even. She, what I'm saying is, she's she not was even doing a, a stuff. Third. She, she was out. I'm talking. I'm not talking about musically. I'm just talking about like. I'm talking about being on the red carpet. Yeah. Being on the red That's carpet. That's just you and accessories. Commercials. That's it though. Like Cassie like doesn't have the. Rihanna is. I mean, yeah, because she can oh, no. because yeah. she's a singer. I mean, she can sing. Cassie's a singer too. But so she ain't got no hits. Yep, she had too. That's what. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't maximize off of that. She was an accessory. Yeah. So the comparison with Diddy and Cassie with Rihanna that's and bad, Jay. That's a bad one. That's not a... I mean, but Chris Brown said what happened. No, no. They got in... To me, it seemed like they left the, pre, they left the pre-Grammy um, um, party drunk. They was drunk. They were young. They were drunk as fuck. And it was an argument that went extremely left based off of alcohol. I'm telling you. However... Social media at that time wasn't as big as what it is now. Imagine if you want to flip what what happened I'm with me. What that argument was about. Okay. The argument was probably like it's probably like probably not this first time bringing that up. Probably brought mm-hmm. it up again. You know what I'm saying? It's probably like been lingering. And he got in the car. I'm telling you. I, I think I think I think she gave him something, or whatever. And she gave who something? Chris Brown. That's what I'm saying. I feel like she. I feel like 
Brianna was still dealing with Jay Z while they were in a relationship. I don't know about But because Jay Z's so big, he can't really come out to Jay Z. So he gonna go off. He gonna go straight to Rihanna. What's up, bro? I, I I got something. Where I get it from? You the only one I'm fucking. See, you, but, but no, no. You see how you see, you, you see how love that conversation can go though. You really think you Chris Brown was only fucking Rihanna? They I'm was in a peak of they. Just, but I'm just, you see how love no. that conversation can go though. No, nigga. They can go from that to to square no, up. No, they were they were at the peak. Quick. of Both of them were at the peak of they of their careers. They were the hottest artists in that time in 2009. It's no way in hell. Regardless, Chris Brown could have been fucking hella bitches, and maybe Rihanna was fucking hella niggas. I don't think that conversation went that way. I think it was just honestly an argument that went extremely left. That nigga said the bitch grabbed his nuts while he was driving and was throwing out his demo tapes. This nigga had unleaked music that was never released anywhere, and she throwing out all this shit. Mm. Michael Jackson shot like off of family Johnson family vacation. <laughs> like she throwing shit out the car. He he pulls over, and then the fight it it went it, worse. It went too far. I think they were just drunk, and I think that night just mm. went. Left. However, comma, I do feel like it does suck um, that his past is still taunting him however many years later. However, like we said on here one time before, if you a stealer, you a thief. That's what you I a thief. Say. And you get caught, like niggas know that you a you a thief, then I'm gonna have I'm gonna subconsciously make sure I, I, I put my shit up to where you know what, you're not in the vicinity of being able to steal we're, my we're, stuff. But we're also having even though you may have changed. Even if you ain't stolen in 20 years? Even if you ain't stolen 20 years. Now, it, this is the thing is, though. Now, we didn't all stole before. All of us, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I just speak I for have. me. I ain't, gonna cap. I ain't never got I ain't caught, gonna though, right? So if I'm not telling niggas that I used to really be out here flipping shit back in the day, you would never know. But if I went to jail for being a thief, and that's what that's well-known shit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to forever be a, something that's attached to me. I, I love Chris Brown. I think he's a great artist. And I, I I like whenever he does speak out and whenever he does do interviews, I think he's a great guy. But I, 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 I hate that future that's, things don't allow him to... That's not the first time he'd have been invited somewhere. And then at the last I minute, know. they told I mean, him he can't but it's, do it. it's just like people still got to the stay in the Chris Brown. I think they fucking with him, though. Like, just don't no, invite him at all. That's true. Uh, I think what happens is they think well because he's still on he's still on the no, he's no. still on the map he's making good music yeah. somebody doesn't really somebody on a somebody behind the scenes in executive world may like Chris Brown and as then, the uh, artist it's a bigger person and then it's like, a bigger person like, like no nah, that's not gonna be good for the brand not gonna do which that. then makes them have to renege on the offer which sucks because that should be a conversation that's already talked about it then presented but you know I think Chris Brown is you think he deserves a second chance though. Yeah. He should, but he's he unfortunately been got that shit unfortunately years being ago. that that's something that happened like it did. It's, I don't because, think of, it's, it's because of who it is, bro. It's Rihanna. It's, 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 it's not it's, even that. It's, it's, it's just it's right. It's Rock no, Nation, because, bro. Rock Nation, they, they're too I, powerful. It's the same I, reason. I same reason why Tory ain't gonna get out because Rock Nation, they ain't gonna let him out. Well, that's well, yeah. I'm just saying, it's like Had she, they're powerful though. That they they control the narrative. I think it's all about. I don't think it has nothing to do with the person. I think it has to do all with social media. Like, had we never seen those pictures? Had we never known Rihanna got beat yeah. up? Like, Rihanna want to leave it alone. Rihanna is cool with it. This bitch is living her life. But because of that, like we talked about, it's he, not he, no, he, it's he not can't... no other entity. It's society yeah. and how society is going to view it. Yeah. It, it don't same have nothing. Reason, to do... Same reason why he only got one Grammy. That's well, yeah. foolish. Well, the reason why he got one Grammy is because he he fucked up at the peak of his career. But I'm, what I'm saying though, he's had. He, come on now. If we just talking about the music, he's supposed to have. Yeah, way but she's telling you why he only got one Grammy. That's what oh, I'm no, saying. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, saying. he I'm fucked. Saying. He fucked up at the peak of his yeah. career pre Grammy night. Yeah. So he. Yeah. <laughs> Your shit wash. You yeah. Grammys ain't doing nothing with you. You yeah. ain't getting you may be in the nomination, but you ain't gonna win it. Just like Nicki Minaj. Whatever Nicki didn't did behind the scenes. She's not gonna she has yet to win but, a Grammy. But when you think about when you think about that, like you think about his peers. It's people it's, it's he only has one Grammy compared to like somebody like Taylor Swift who has That ain't his peer. She came out after him. I feel like it's it's a white it's it's like white and black because I feel like she I feel like he he a better artist than she is, but that's you. You're subjective. Yeah. But even if he is, it's just it ain't got nothing to do with the music. The artistry. It's street. never about the it's music. Ha- yeah, yeah, no. It ain't about the artistry at this point. It's about them pictures with that girl with that black eye that you blacked. And I mean, like, like my thing is, 
if if we notice, um, I don't know, society. It 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 is it, Super Bowl. We just talked about that. Another one. They what? might not. I don't, I don't think that they're gonna let him do a Super Bowl performance. And I feel like he deserves. That's a different. That's a different. Um, if you want, if you want, if, if for the Super Bowl is supposed to be a show, if you want a real show. He he's supposed yeah, to be next. They up. probably ain't gonna let him. But do see that. my and, and what I'm what I'm once again reiterating is social media. Michael Jackson was an alleged pedophile. But that was after the fact. No, it was not. Michael Jackson. Nah, that he was, nigga performed he, in '98. Yeah, that yeah, nigga had been there the allegations. Oh, okay. All that shit. He was in court. He was in his court career. during that. And they still let him. Yes. So what's the difference? Social media. But, social media. Okay. Keep missing it. Social media. We Social didn't media. see it like that. We didn't, we didn't see. see it. It was it was alleged. Just like you talking about, or did you say Dr. J with Dr. the impact? Mm-hmm. That was alleged. We still, Michelle, she vocally talked about this shit. Yeah. But did we see you get your ass beat? We didn't see no pictures. We didn't see no videos. So long as it's alleged. You're right. You're right about that. It's because we visually saw it. Yep. Cr- uh, R. Kelly, what we see. That tape of him got, peeing on that little ass girl. We seen that Got tape. fucked up. We seen it that was tape. no alleged shit. We got we got footage that niggas can see. Niggas can go on Google and find it. Now they've wiped that video now, but at a time you can we see seen that it. video. We synced it. So it's like these things is when people can actually visually see it, it make it make a whole of a lot of difference. It could be a ledge all they want. So <laughs> y'all yeah. get Chris a chance, man. God, I feel, damn. Like, I feel like he deserves a chance. He I, do. I, I really want him to do the halftime show one day. I, I really want him to. And I just hope flowers, that his man. mental. I hope his mental state is okay because. To constantly go to a certain, like, it, as it seems to us, he's passing by it, but then yep. he's constantly and reminded. They right back. Yep. Like, get your goddamn ass. So I just, you know, the man living his life. He got three children. He's, he's, he seems to be an amazing father, active father. Um, Rihanna has moved on with her life. She's doing her damn thing. The, the, um, at one point, they had some type of um, restraining order where he couldn't be in the distance of her. That seems to not be much as of a talk as, anymore. As long as Jay-Z over the halftime show, it's not happening. It's not happening. Mm, well. That's just what it is. Bonnie Willis was on a stand this week. Mm-hmm. She, uh, she was alleged of um, using money from the government, I think, to pay for well, her. her uh, that's a lot of things she's alleged of, but that's one of them. Well, Going she on was trips. on the stand for the Trump. She was on, yeah, she's on the stand the, for the, the Trump, Trump stuff. thing. Yeah. Uh, but this, they it, tried to crossfire her with the alleged of using. Um, yeah. They're trying not to put her back on the stand. They're trying. They're trying to make that be it because they feel like they're gonna get, they're gonna make it worse. I mean, she can't. She 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 kind of hit them with it like y'all not finna hold me. I know. I know my right. <laughs> like they wanted to get. They wanted to get lines of like her her uh, bank account statements and shit. She was like, no, I ain't. I'm not I ain't really see much on that topic. Yeah, she's like, I'm not on trial. So what y'all won't do is that we're talking about Trump. Pretty much, you niggas did it. Um, this is why we're here. I seen that clip though. She was popping her shit. She was. I mean, she was standing on business. However, what I did say though, I, I made the comment. Um, uh, I think I made it like on Twitter, and I was like, "Not finding Willis being so so gun ho on getting thugs thugs so damn locked up, but baby, you ain't really swept your own porch thinking that shit wasn't gonna get gonna hit mm-hmm. you on the mainstream." So you know, she don't have nothing to do with. She a DA, so she got thug with his shit, but she's just a a witness or testifying against Trump. And then your real business came out. Mm. So I want to see how that's going to unfold because I know it don't really have nothing to do with Thug, but you know, yeah. you was just so, so pressed on getting Thug bammed and baby, you got some sweeping to do on your front porch. So. Yeah. I want to just say, man, she don't know how to get away with murder type shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's big wild. funny. That's big funny. So how did y'all feel? How did y'all feel about, uh, uh, Uncle Shay Shay and Mike Epps with this whole little damn back and forth shit they had going on in the last week and a half. Mike oh, lied. No. I feel like with comedians, you can't really take nothing personal, but 
they're not they're not saying my name personally, so I don't know how to really feel about it. No, that. Mike Epps said Shannon Sharp. No, 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 I know that. Oh, that's about me. Like, oh. I, I I feel like with comedians, you kind of gotta give them some leeway because they're 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 trying to be funny. They're they're pulling stuff. And he the he the most popping nigga right now. But yeah, yeah. Shannon had a right to feel how he, how he felt because the nigga told a blatant ass lie. Yeah. Nigga, you lied on me and said my name. He got me fucked up. Nigga, but, you going to nigga stand on that shit when I see you. But what did he really lie about? The DMs. He said, nigga, that Shannon hit him, try, wanted him to be on his show, but no, it was the opposite way around. Yeah, yeah. okay. And Mike Epps hit him up. That, to me, that show. wasn't worth all that shit that Shannon did. It wasn't worth like, it. Like, Shannon it, made it, to me, I feel like there was more of a deeper message with Mike's. Nigga, keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. <sighs> I just didn't think, like, Shannon was, <laughs> Shannon was pissed, and it's funny to see it. When they did, when Ocho was with him, Ocho, like, oh, yeah. he he ready. He didn't he, even know who the fuck Of course he go ahead, live it. Well, he didn't even know who the fuck Shannon was talking about. And then when he realized. He knew. He swear he didn't know. He was saying that on the show. You know, he gonna, he, he don't want to say the name, because neither one of them said the name. That's why he was like, yeah, I don't know who you're talking about, but I'm with you. No, he. He, he knew, bro. I don't think he knew. Uh, because, but, well, you know, the, but you know, Undisputed, they speak every night. They probably, so, they, the night, the, the, the day that the Shannon Sharp. Or the day that Mike Epps shit went went viral, they spoke on it that night. So I think when he made the first clip, Ocho didn't know who he was talking about. You don't think Ocho knew? No. Nah, just... Now when they went back and kept talking about it, I think Ocho found out who it was. Only way because he would the, know... the chat gonna say it because the chat who watched it. Only way it, he yeah, would yeah. know. He it... didn't. Ocho, I don't think knew it first because Ocho would pop shit like, okay, uh, who is I'm, it? I'm, Let thinking, him. I'm, I'm just thinking about the only way he would. The only way he would know is if before they started filming. They didn't know. They it might have like. like a brief like conversation like, or he, you know, it's like how before we, we film, we might say some shit like, I might say some shit like somebody pissed me off. Like this, this month, whatever. And they would like, save it for the You know what I'm saying? Then I, then I might save it for the show or whatever. But because we on camera, I ain't going to say your name. But it's like, oh, so I know who he talking about, but he, I don't know what, what, what I'm going to say though. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, I'm going to add, I'm going to be entertaining because I'm on the show too, so. But still, nigga, keep my motherfucking name out your mouth. Fuck, they, nigga. Uh, I ain't think it was that. Bitch, ass nigga. Words, whole ass nigga. I, I, you, he did all of that just to meet the nigga. Just to meet the nigga. Shake hands but, but that's how men do, though. Even if we, if we have a disagreement, if I if I know you're going to be the same city, let's link up. Let's Damn, have, Will let's, Smith ain't teach niggas nothing. Let's have, a, let's have a conversation. That's how it's supposed keep to be. Keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. Oh, that's my Will Smith. Keep my name out your motherfucking mouth, bitch. Know. I ain't really think I ain't really think it was all that. I think Shannon was upset about. I don't like when nigga lie on niggas, me, so I felt that nigga. Nah, I think it was more so the gay dog, the gay jokes. Oh, oh that's just been talking about Shannon. Yeah, that's definitely and nerve. he wanted to make it. He wanted to make him a that deer? comment. That definitely hit a nerve. <laughs> hey, you can't you can't call no man Medea dog. That, that that's on a whole another level. Like you basically saying I'm undercover pretty much. Oh no, nah, that's been, what I'm, they saying. I'm been, been, that's I'm been saying, a comment. I'm saying that because of what he be, he be wearing them jogging suit. You know he big. He should be tight as hell he too. Tight he, so now everybody think, and that's what Mike says. You're not gonna hey, sit. Oh. You're not gonna be sitting across from me with your legs spread out. <laughs> and then Mike funny. So it's that shit made it if, and, and if the shit funny, you really gonna be mad. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, and, yeah. well, and and see, so then when they went a couple of days later. And talk about it. Ocho said, like, bro, like, if you know it's not true, it's really no reason that you getting all up in arms. Mm -hmm. And then Shannon's response was, it's all good until they say something, until they say something about you. But Mike Epps came for Ocho too when he clapped back. My thing is, I think Shannon got a little scared when Mike said, Yeah, I'm finna, I don't fight. I'm <laughs> coming, I'm yeah, coming with a gun, my nigga. Of course he's gonna say that. We nigga, shoot. Shannon three, 250. Yeah, and I'm gonna shoot solid. your big hey, ass. When they said that though, I knew. I knew they were gonna make up. I knew, I knew it. they were gonna make when up. When they say yeah, I'm gonna yeah, see you in um Indianapolis, them nigga, them nigga yeah, gonna fight. First yeah, of all, yeah. Shannon is a smart ass nigga. He's not dumb enough to go fight a nigga ass. So that's why I'm like, why did you do all of that? What was the point? If Keep you my name out you, your motherfucking mouth. If, and that's all you had to say. But but all that little big boy shit, you not even using mofo right. Mofo? Talking about keep my mofo name. He don't curse though, don't he? No, he don't want to. He don't want to curse on. Yeah, uh, on, on, yeah, on mofo. You should left alone. That mofo didn't sound right yeah. with he name tried, in front of it. I guess. But anyway, I mean, I just didn't think all of that was well, needed. If you knew you was going to make... If you knew you was going to see the nigga next week, it just, that should have just been a simple talk. That right. should have just been seen. Mike, when I see you in Indianapolis, we're going to have a chat. See if you mm -hmm. got the same energy. And left it at that. That nigga, Shannon, was pissed. It was, it was and I, I watched them every day at work. So for me to ever... like. Shannon pop his shit every now and then, but he was really upset. And I think he was more so upset about the gay comment that than anything it. because that is a running... Topic with Shannon yeah. Sharp. They think yeah. he's gay. So running topic. I don't get it. I don't. That Medea shit. 
I don't even Took get why they feel top. that way, bro. You can't. I'm saying, bro. They call I don't know until you see that little bro. dog. That little dog. He be running in the airport with. That's cool. With everybody, I just, I just seen niggas with the worst. Chihuahuas. It ain't the dog. <laughs> it's the tight clothes and all the muscles. It's, the, it's saying, the Pomeranian, bro. baby. He takes that Pomeranian sassy everywhere, now, bro. You can't do nothing. I ain't saying you was sassy. Can't be too tight, but you can't do nothing, bro. You can't. You can't smoke hookah. <laughs> You can't, you can't be emotional. And that's exactly why niggas shit. can't do nothing, yeah, bro. That's why niggas can't be vulnerable. Everything you do is oh, Everything got damn sassy. Bro. Everything is sassy. It bro. ain't got nothing to do with shit. It ain't got nothing to do bro, with being ain't sassy. Not, ain't nothing wrong. Most, Shannon most, Sharp just most, don't. Got, Shannon Sharp just don't have. I think Shannon is is. He got is, three. He got is, like five kids. No, he don't. He got two. Chill. And then they say he dating white women, and he, he got only black got kids. two. Chill. So, I think Shannon is a very attractive old man, and if you want to holler at me, Shannon, you know I get you right. But, but you, you sound like you you feel like he might be on the gay side too. I don't know, but I get why people got the alleged things like. So you don't think he's gay? I don't think he's gay, but, but you I can but see. You don't think he should wear them jogger suits? No, I ain't talking about that either. I mean, if you, I don't know. I ain't never. I don't even think I've ever really peeped the jogger suits. But what you peeping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your yeah. Penises. Yeah. The peeping and I mean the mannerisms and the little lisp he got going on. That's all I be trying to make sure he get that together. But outside of that, I mean I get it. What's but your, what's he just that? don't. He just and then he blocks like. I don't oh, know. He man. doesn't. A lot of his shit just doesn't. It, 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 it. He doing a lot of dumb shit, and it, it it doesn't fit the mold that he doesn't want to be spoke about. Like he blocks a lot of gay people. A lot of the gay people don't realize why they're blocked because they're like, damn, I've never spoke to... Like they blocked on Instagram? I've never spoke to Shannon Sharp a day in my life and I'm blocked. He might not like... He don't like that shit. So how, because, how you know they so ain't So because you don't want to see them means you want to see them is what she said. But no, they probably No, but be, why no. are they blocked if you don't follow them? No, they, probably be, they probably be DMing this nigga, bro. They probably be DMing them. Gay, listen, no, no cap. Gay Man. niggas don't DM me, bro. His DMs is flooded. When I ain't do no, no shirt, what he when I do no shirt pics, nigga, gay niggas be in my shit, bro. I be like, nigga, what the fuck wrong with y'all? Fuck, boy. <laughs> I be able to block them nigga too. And yeah. I, I'm not a celebrity. So imagine a celebrity who got yeah. a body. He probably got two or three. So I'm, when I'm talking about the people that nobody. he's blocked, I'm talking about celebrities. Gay celebrities? T.S. Madison is a transsexual. But how you know they ain't tried that man? They ain't tried him. How you know? You seen his DMs? I they still, ain't trying him. Bro, if regular gay niggas be in niggas DMs, what you think they doing with him? If I don't like... They on that nigga like, bump up, boy. What is the biggest mistake that women make in relationships? Um, <laughs> why you do that, bro? In <laughs> hey, your opinion, like I mean, you 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 know a lot of women. You you know you you hear how they talk. You see you see why they in relationships, why they not in relationships. But you feel like the biggest mistake they make? Um. I think the biggest mistake that women probably do make is potentially um, when a man, when you're in a relationship and your significant other comes to you about a critique or something that they do not like that you do. Take it personal. Extremely personal. And we all up in arms. We, we, we ready for war. Um, versus taking the criticism from a place of this significant other is coming to you because they love you. They want to be with you long term, but they also don't like some of the things that you do. Um, and I don't think, I think also too, women may in those instances or in those spaces, when a man is telling you the things about you, you find a way to flip it and make it about him too. Mm. Um, like he'd be like, you know, well, I don't like X, Y, and Z. Well, I, I, I don't like X, Y, and Z too, but I'm still here. Like, yeah. The type of like projecting, um, I think that may be some of our biggest mistakes. And sometimes maybe just as women, we should maybe just take the critique. And I mean, we we as people don't see each other on the outside looking in. So if somebody that you're dating or somebody that you're dating tells you about yourself or tell you something that may not be viewed in the best in the best way to them. 
take it and see if there's a way that you can critique it to where it could be beneficial for both parties to to um to prosper from but if somebody is telling you something that they may not like that you're doing or it's something that's a habit that they don't agree with everybody ain't against you mm-hmm. you know everybody ain't your enemy if you're with somebody who's saying like I don't like x y and z you know maybe take a, take a moment step out step out of it maybe reevaluate mm-hmm. look at it see what where it could be where it could be fixed at and then bring it back like okay mm-hmm. well I was thinking about what you said, but a lot of times whenever we're we're brought with the constructive criticism, it a lot of times turns into an argument versus a, a think corner. I think the biggest mistake women make is um, comparisons. Like, they see other relationships and they have these false expectations of what they should, should be when they look at, you know how it is, back to social media, right? You look at all these relationships with people doing extravagant things for their woman and just having just these, these Instagram relationships and then when they get with a dude, they feel like that's how that shit should be. But you got to learn your man. You got to learn who he is and you got to you either fuck with him for who he is or you, or you don't. But they be having false expectations, bro. Like, everybody ain't finna have an Instagram relationship. But, I, but don't you think that kind of goes either way? Yeah. Both we, men and women? Hell yeah, everybody. That's just a relationship, period. But, mm. you know, he asked about the women. But I definitely know, I think it leans more towards women, though. Because men, we're not, we not that... Uh, we're not that, uh, what's the word? Materialistic. materialistic yeah. We're mm-hmm. not that materialistic. Women are way more materialistic than men. So, so yeah. So if I'm in that industry and I see uh, somebody in my industry do something for their significant other, I'm looking at him like, what, what, what you gonna do for me? You gonna do that? You gonna say that? I feel just man. Um, I was gonna say I just feel like women um, self sabotage, like. I feel like that that's that's what it is. The overthinking, the it's it's a lot it's a lot that go into that. Like I feel like when I say self sabotage, I mean like We know what self sabotage means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> hey, but you but you disagree. I think I think men do too. Okay. <laughs> I, I agree. No, 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 but I agree. I agree because I it, it just like, like me. My, I, it like you, me why you said that. You, but. So you you asked me what I think the biggest mistake is with women. I don't think a lot of I think I, on, overthinking though. I don't. That's what I'm gonna go for. I think overthinking. I think with women, you know, we don't take the self criticism as well as men do. Mm. I feel like as a woman, I could come to my man and tell him, I can run the list down, and you're mm. not as defensive as if it was to be on the opposite foot. It's, it's, I think yeah. both of y'all's. T- I mean, they're, they 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 apply to women and they apply to men. Yeah. Um. But, but I think most women just a lot of times we just don't take that self criticism well. It's a double standard because, like like you said, even like when it comes to like what you want out of a man, a woman list is long. A man probably like three or four things where he want to agree and yeah, he's straight. With women, it's like you got to do everything. You got to have a whole. I list think that come like, with age though. But do you think it is it, it relates? What to um? And I'm losing my point. But what we were just saying, like um, the biggest mistake women make, you were saying that um, damn, what you we just don't said. take self criticism. You also say yeah, criticism. So mm-hmm. the criticism, like, hey, I could tell you, hey, you broke. We talked about this earlier. Like, um, uh, a, a woman quit to tell a nigga whether or not he broke or not, especially if he living with her. He got a job, or you need to get out, or you ain't doing nothing. Why you here? Why you over it? Why you ain't staying with your mama? But half of half of the girls in Atlanta, if you ask them what they do for a living, they're entrepreneur. So it's like, what? What? Because I'm a guy, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say those type of things. You, because you're a man girl, in Atlanta, you can say you're an entrepreneur. But because you're a girl, but what I'm saying, I'm an entrepreneur. I which, got a what your comparison is, what your comparison is, a woman can stay at home with her parents and it's okay. If a nigga stay at home with his parents, he can't. It's not okay. Yeah. Or yeah, or or and that, but that's the double standard, and that's I think that's the only the issue. I think that's the issue that I have. When it when it applies to men, it's okay. When the double standard applies to you, when it's in your favor, it's cool. But when it's not in the favor of a man, it's an issue. So can you give me an example? I ju- I just gave okay. one. A woman who stayed with her parents. Niggas don't look at that crazy. Yeah. But a a woman that stayed with a woman who looking who's even, dating or, or even living in the same house. What you mean? If I got a girl in the house, she don't have a job. I might not judge her that much as if the roles were reversed. 
Facts. And you had a job and I was I ain't had no job. Right, but and that's just a it's just a double standard. But it's yeah. like, why is a double standard okay for, for men when it's in their favor, but when it's in when it's in the woman's favor? It's just always a fucking uproar. It's like, well, what's the what? Give me a. I mean, it's that, okay. That, no, that's what I'm saying. Give me that example. <laughs> if if y'all look, if your old lady don't like you being in the crib and you ain't got no job, then they ain't the old lady for you. Period. But you niggas also talk about bitches that allow niggas to stay up in their crib and ain't doing shit for the bitch to stay up in their crib. Then it's mm. it, it, it's never a win okay. for the woman. But when, like I said, when it's in a favor think, for I a think, man, I think we both should just have jobs. That's fine. But like I said. You me. you made the comparison of it's an issue when a man well, living agree, in... I agree, 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 agree. But if a woman allows a man to stay in the crib without a job, you still on the bitch head about it. You're right. So it's like, which one... Well, He's still chasing his dreams. He's still doing something. Because I'm not... Most... No my thing is... That's, and that's... And that... Okay, now if but he's chasing... It. We just talked about that. If he's chasing... Dreams or not, that might not still be enough. What? But it's different when the woman taking care of a bum ass nigga who just sitting in the house with his nigga smoking weed and playing the game. All it's different than a nigga who might be trying to do something. But a nigga who trying to do something, who chasing after dream, he has he should have the morale to know that he got to also bring some men. That shouldn't be an argument. Oh, the scenario. I get what you're saying. Like the one who's not doing nothing versus the person who he might not have the money, but he's trying. That's fine. We ain't talking about that. But at, at some point, it's still an issue because it's like, okay, how long the nigga gonna try? You'll have you'll have uncles, you'll have dads to be like, okay, this man living with you, yeah, he trying, but how long is the try? Because if he's not finding ways to make ends meet for the household, then you you, gotta you, make a decision. you just got a kid in the crib. You got a nigga that ain't. So it's just like. The double standards, I think, a lot of times it gets stupid because it's cool when it appease you, but when it don't appease you, it's a big ass issue. Mm. And then sometimes the double standard don't never win on either side. It's always either or. Going into that, I got a clip that kind of actually goes into some of the biggest mistakes women make, um, and we <laughs> and uh, it's, we got a clip. Well, um, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna just let y'all listen to the clip, and then we gonna talk about it. Don't Hold on. What the world is saying, okay? I'm gonna start it up. I don't believe this, but this is what the worlds are saying, okay? <laughs> this is what the worlds are saying. <laughs> They like the medium ugly guys because they supposedly treat you better because they're not full of themselves. A lot of girls don't go after the really good looking guys because they feel like it's too much competition there. He's getting his pick of the lot. If there's a Chris Brown in the room and then there's like a funny Marco, <laughs> you would be surprised at how many girls will go for the funny Marco because let's say they both got the same amount of money. Let's say money's not the difference. Right. They will go off, a, go off to the funny Marco because they know for a fact, like, you know what? He probably don't even get as many girls anyway. So, so to him, I'm as good as it gets. Yeah, but what about That's the That's the mentality. Yeah, that plays a part, but I'm saying most women when it comes to looks, mm -hmm. stray That's away from the guys yeah. that the Chris Brown guys, a lot of women don't, they might have sex with you or my whatever, but they, they don't want to settle down with you because right. they know other women are going to like you. And they don't want to have to deal with that because you can choose as a good looking man. You're tall. You look like Chris Brown. You're tall. Right. You have money or whatever. The, women can't manipulate those type of guys <laughs> because they know they have their pick of the litter and they know they can get the baddest girl in the room. So they don't want to have to deal with that competition. What if he's that Chris Brown looking guy and you don't know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, I ain't a lot of, I got, you know, I train like 90% women and I ain't a lot. A few of them have said that. They were like, I, I date medium ugly niggas. I don't like them fine niggas. They, they said that same shit she's saying. That's like, a that's a confidence thing. That think, sounds yes, like you're projecting yes, to me. I, I agree with that. That just sounds like you're not confident to go in the room and bag the nigga. And these bad but, but, bitches but, too. But no, most but women are not. But that's why most women don't approach with men because they don't have the confidence to do it. it, it goes that's what I'm saying. That. But it just sounds like you're projecting. Like you think 
them the easier ones. You don't want to go for the challenge. It's not even about getting it's them. It's a confidence thing. It's also about what he can obtain. Like you might be able to bag him, but it might be the competition. Like I said, the competition. There's other women. I've him. been told that guys that I've talked to or dated that Snook, you'd be crazy to believe that you gonna like. I don't even know how to put this in the words to sound right. Like, um. It's so far fetched to believe that an attractive guy could not want you and be okay with just you. I think medium ugly niggas get can get bitches too. If like she said, her comparison was niggas with the money. If you a medium ugly nigga with money and you a good looking ass nigga with money, they both have the advantage. They both have the playing field. But I feel like women who don't go for the good looking guy, they know that it's. A multitude of women, but it's a multiple a multitude of women with the medium ugly nigga too. If he got money, y'all niggas talk about niggas with money all the time. Oh, uh, let's talk about niggas with no money, huh? Let's talk about niggas with no money, ugly and the ones that's good looking. The ones that's ugly with no money, no play. If I'm good looking, I can get away with murder. I can get away with a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But yeah. that, but back again, yeah. Then okay, are those women making those jabs to you? Like I don't. My thing is, I think everybody's taste is subjective. The so approach. what you may think is medium ugly, I might think might be high key. Would you date funny, Marco? Fuck no. Okay, but, it, <laughs> but compared, but compared to Chris Brown, I wouldn't date Chris Brown. Mm. I think he's attractive, but I wouldn't date him. You don't like light skinned niggas though, huh? You don't like light skinned niggas. I don't have a preference. You don't date light skinned. You could be yeah. as black as Tom. She got yeah. She if you find, you find. I know a couple light niggas she done dealt with. Huh? I know a lot of skin dudes you dealt with. Okay, but I'm just saying you know yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you on it on everything you just said though. <laughs> Hold it. Um, yeah. So I mean, I don't have like a preference on skin skin tone, but oh, like funny Marco, that was a bad comparison. Well, that, that was a, she no, should have no, said actually, actually that was a great comparison if you think about funny it. Funny Marco has craters in his face. Yeah, but he. he I don't think so anybody said he ain't medium ugly. He ugly. That's what you saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. but um, he ain't medium but shit. But I, 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 I see that a lot too as well though. Like, I mean, women they just they don't like the the chase. They don't like the chase. They they, they don't like to work for nothing. They that's why I feel like I'm Nobody, cut from a different cloth because I don't mind a little. Women, I'm not stupid. I'm not. I'm not. Not say stupid. I'm not naive enough to believe that anybody that I initially meet don't have somebody. That's crazy to believe that. Yeah, no matter, on the no, 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 no matter what you look like, somebody has somebody, and it could be a current somebody, an old somebody. But it's the it's the, it's about women feeling like they're the prize. If they don't feel like they're the prize, they don't feel like they're important in a relationship. Men that are attracted in the that's dating field, of hoes, if they getting hoes, or I mean not getting hoes, but are, if <laughs> if they're getting approached by a lot of women, it's gonna come off as if he's the prize because he has the pick of the litter. You know what I'm That's a known fact, man. Just it's like, more, it's more said, women though. than it is to men right now. Oh, yeah, but, we gotta pick up. Y'all gotta anyway. pick a litter no matter what. No, right though. But but when you're attractive, it's different. It's on a different it level, is, though. though. It's it on is. a different level. It's a different care. feeling, especially when you that girl. Well, I be having to fight them all with a see. stick. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? I gotta fight and them then, all. Then you gotta think about that. Cause she ain't the only one who said this too, though, about how she feel like she don't like doing that because you can't manipulate a guy who looks good. I feel like that's how women think. And I think that that's yeah, you can't I, manipulate. Well, I but think why you, are you trying to manipulate people? And, and, and she used the wrong. I think she used the wrong term in regards to manipulate. But oh, they are. Oh yeah, talking about good looking niggas with no confidence. Hell yeah, absolutely. I'm Those just, it'd be a lot of them. Yeah, I think confidence is the key to everything. But my yeah. thing is, a lot of exactly. good looking guys know that they're good looking, and it comes that's with the nothing. Confidence. No, that's not the confidence. You know that you look, you've been told your entire life that you a good looking ass nigga. You don't have to come with nothing else to the playing field. Until your ass hits a certain age and you realize bitches just ain't going for looks no more. Now you lost. Yeah. But don't let you be a good little nigga with money. Then you also double fucked. Because once, a, once, once she gets below the money and the looks and she realizes there ain't nothing left. And this is a woman with, 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 yeah, with substance. When she realizes ain't nothing left for you, just yeah, I'm about to here. I gotta go because you don't have nothing to offer me. See the see the ugly niggas, they ain't got nothing to lose. So they doing they, they ain't doing got everything. nothing to lose. You already the, you already the boss. But like I said <laughs> you, though, I think for, it's I think it's I think it's subjective. But see, they do all the extra shit, the shit that the the, the other nigga might the attractive nigga not doing because he feel like he don't got to do that. He feel like he got the pick of the litter. The the medium ugly, like I said, he ain't got nothing to lose. So he gonna do all the stops. He gonna 
do the violin and do you know what I'm saying? He Don't gonna, do that. That nigga was saying, like, <laughs> he gonna spawn as fuck. He gonna both saying like that. They feel like, but the woman I want like to talk about shit, something, but I'm gonna leave that where it's at. The type of bitch he dating, but no. I'm just, I just use that he as an example, like, but I don't know. I just feel <laughs> like, <laughs> I just feel like a lot of time going back to, I feel like women self sabotage a lot of things because, like, when you're, it's a confidence thing. I know women, it's, it, it's like a, this again, another double standard. Like, women don't like to work for nothing. We, do. women don't like to work in general. They don't like to. They, I'm just trying to figure out what what bitches is you dealing with. I'm, just, I'm thinking about overall like women. Most women. I mean, if I'm I, think, in a I think you should speak. I think you should speak to the demographics in Atlanta. We know a lot of hard well, women, it's not, it's hard not, yeah, working doing black yes, women yes. that are doing the big. They're work. doing that, but they don't want to do it. Who wants to do it? You don't want to work it, neither do I. I want the money to make it for for us. I want to be in a whole nother spot and it's making its own money. I'm talking about majority. Like, men are okay with working. They they, they don't want... Of course, we don't want to work, but we're we're cool with doing it. And women are now used to having to work as well. We don't want to do it, but we got to do it. Because who going to do it for us? Now, there are some girls I hear that's living lavish in a penthouse suite. Yeah. I can't speak for them, but... Most girls' dreams is to get married, and the guy is the only one that's bringing in that money. And I'm taking... That's not true. Majority of them, that's what they want. That's not true, Nigel. That's not true. That's how they living? No. That's not true. Not in in today's. Okay. Maybe back in the day, like... So, most women, they want to work. I think I think a lot of men come to the to the to the table now with, baby, I don't want you to work. So if I got it, and and we get married, you don't have to. If you want to, great. But this isn't a this isn't a requirement of you to do so. As if I if I ever get married, and my man tell me he don't want me to work, I'm gonna still work because I, I need a, something to look, do. Though, I, I heard a story. I'm 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 gonna top I'm gonna top what you just said. I heard a story yesterday about a married couple who just just had a baby, and he works in the fan ministry. And he went through a strike where he had to, he was working, but he had to switch jobs. Mm-hmm. But the job he had to switch wasn't making as much money as he was making the fan ministry. Mm-hmm. So his wife had to work, and mm-hmm. he feel like once his wife started had to work, her she she changed like. The, the the relationship wasn't the same because she wasn't she wasn't um like she was upset because she had to work and so it, it changed the relationship and he was like right now we're going with a rocket right now because she not really you know giving her best energy because you know she she upset because she has to work okay so that that like then that. that now has you you need to you you need to, you need to put up, put yourself in the think corner and think about who you done married. Because yeah. that has to deal with who you married. Yeah. If you didn't realize the old, the woman that you had that knew, for for better or for worse, thick or thin, you might need to you might need to pick yourself. I think they married. I think they got a child together and they're just in there together. Oh, was well, she? But he, you know, he. I, oh, he thinks, I don't think she leave, bro. That child, I don't think she leave. But I definitely think they have a conversation though. He, I mean, shouldn't marry her, and, and, he then, is, and I, then that should I, have him on, looking. That should have him looking. He, they might be married. I don't, I don't know whether they're married. If or not. they're not married, I know they have a child together. So I don't know. He needs to look at the and bigger they're picture. Still together. He needs to look at the bigger picture. Yeah. I mean, my thing is, we, we, I talk about, I say this all the time about this whole but, money thing because life can change as fast as you throw it. We talked about COVID. Was nothing that anybody seen coming. Yeah. So many people lost their jobs. Agreed. So many main breadwinners lost their jobs, and we seen so many divorces happen from that because the significant but that's other how most was divorces, not the most divorces is because of finances. Mm-hmm. Correct, and those are, that's what also people don't talk enough about. But we've seen so many divorces from COVID because those weren't conversations that people were having. Nobody had that conversation. That if I fall sick, anything, if I get in an accident. And I'm paralyzed, and I'm a fucking construction worker, mm-hmm. and I'm bringing over one hundred and fifty thousand a year. We, we need a plan B. But Somebody got to realize we got to get out in the field, and we got to make some shit shake. But people don't think about those type of things. So, like gotta, when right. you're when you're even dating, right. those conversations to me are even more important and about come, than what come, your like favorite you said, color they come, is. They come down to the girl that you that, that you that you or the with. man. No, what I'm saying that we, when it comes to like, what type of women are, are are you dating a girl that's that's willing to suggest uh, Plan Bs, or is she just there for the ride? But see, guess what? We we I talk about this too a lot. A lot of y'all men don't sometimes. Let me looking, not say a lot. Because you some right, of y'all because men looking, looking at how they look, and how they look. Not even about looks. Like, I'm not even talking about that. Some of y'all men miss out 
on the girl who was down for the climb up to the top versus you leave that girl and then find a girl that you at in the middle of the ladder that just wants you for your money. And then when the hardship comes and you lose everything that attracted that girl that you met in the middle of the ladder, she gone. She out of there because that money ain't there. But mm. homegirl that was with you from the from the bottom of it and left one fourth yeah. in the middle of well, not left, she but just, you, she, but you, she, but she you. She just wanted, she wanted doing. No, she, no, 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 no. She wanted doing what he wanted him to do at that time. It ain't even that. I agree with you though. It ain't, it, I don't even think it's that. I think. It's maturity though. Yes. That's another topic. And sometimes that's people. A, and, and that goes back to my, and this real life shit. Like I had to come to a realization that I had to really go for what was, um, what, what I. What I needed versus what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like that'd be a lot of things that, that I feel like guys be having issues with. What we want and what we need be two separate things. Like, but you be when you're to me, I feel like when you're climbing to the success, a lot of times those guys be so fixated on my my big. We talked about this on the first episode. My business, my business, my business, my work, my work, my work. I want to make it to this to this to this level of success. But you know, once you make it there, there's another chase to it. There's another, there's mm -hmm. another, there's another drilling and rush to make it bigger than where you at now. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's gonna be a constant chase to make yourself to the top of the of the totem pole that you wanna be at. But a lot of those guys dish them girls to the left that's willing to work with you when you had nothing to that middle success point, which goes into the next topic about Desi Banks. And his little combo with little old Shay Shay. She didn't believe in my and dreams. And she didn't believe in the dreams. So what y'all feel about that? Do y'all feel like... I, no, that's, I ain't gonna know if it's true about him. But I know a lot of women that I don't that know how true that. that is. I don't know about him personally, but I do know a lot of women like... But it's like what Ashley said earlier. Money, like, money how long talks. is this shit gonna take? Money that's talks. the thing. Y'all just get it's, tired even, of niggas tasting dreams. And I like, don't even know if if it's the right woman. I don't even know if a woman would even question you on how long will it take. Even the because right because woman if she can't believes, get, you know what the right woman to do help you get a job. And, but what's helping you in that? What's helping nah, I'm you? I'm saying just if you chasing a dream, right? Mm -hmm. And if she feel like it's taking too long, she gonna help you. She gonna say, "Oh, what we need to do to speed this shit up? Like, mm -hmm. what do you need? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a fitness trainer. Just say I want to open a gym." Mm -hmm. Obey, she. I found these dumbbells for a cheaper price. You should probably get these. I did mm -hmm. just do little things to help me mm -hmm. instead of just sitting back saying, "Damn, how long is she gonna take?" Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I got you've been chasing this shit fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, dudes, put help me. Okay, so I agree with that. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with that. But also too. Oh, I'm gonna get love flat. Please. Come on, man. Come on. Smoke. Also too, I feel like. As men, you all speak so heavy and so highly about being breadwinners, wanting to be able to, to, to provide for your, your family or your relationship. Mm -hmm. So as a man, if you know that you are chasing a certain dream, yes, as your partner, I want to help you. We should be able to help each other in whatever situation that we may have a little bit of a deficit in, but... You just sitting around waiting on somebody to continuously, huh, huh? But what, you, are, if, what, if what, where's the? Me. But where's the? My thing is, a dream with no work is. You, you can see we working work. though. It's what just taking you, too long. Okay, no. You putting in what, 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 what are we working? What are it's we doing? Like, it's, it's, it's like me. It's so like give me. me the comparison. Me. Give me, me the comparison. I'm the comparison. I've been running unspoken on for four years. Right. We ain't reached. At the hundred thousand subscribers. Right. Now, am I supposed to stop? No. Or am I supposed to? But I'm saying that. But if I'm because I'm putting too much focus in it, I gotta put focus in this relationship, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not putting as much focus into it because I'm trying to put it all into unspoken. But right now, it's it is still ain't popped yet. So for a girl that's dating me, how long is she supposed to wait? Wait for what? I'm not with you for unspoken. I'm with you because of you. No, right. you not. No, we, about we not. My thing. Let's go back. That's what I'm asking. Nuh-uh. Scratch it. I was that, using that me as an good, example. That ain't a good it example, is, though. It, it is, though. Not really. For somebody that's, for somebody really. that's saying I got a dream. Not really. I could we be talking working about on, a... You can see me putting the work for it. It still ain't coming, though. How long do you wait? For for the... For the for, for what? For, uh, for success in for, whatever for, he's for success. My because thing... if you're not waiting, that means you're complaining. It ain't here yet. These bills do. I got to do this. What's up? And if you ain't right, paying these, these bills, these, I'm out of here. That's not the... No. 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 That's how most girls doing it. That's no. why the divorce rate is so high with women. 
because things change. COVID happened. We don't know how to do this. You ain't coming with no money. I'm coming with all the money. Who? I'm talking with most women that, that that that's leaving with divorce because they leaving with money because but they're not making no money. It's the guy that's making the bread, making the bread. So it's like what if 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 I lose it all, we lose it all. Okay. So therefore, you're gonna leave. So that's what they doing. So look, I ain't trying to be funny. That's what they doing. I I get with it's, but that's not the comparison we talking about. The comparison the, 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 is, you the comparison the, is doing the work, when we right. talking about Desi, Desi spoke like, now I don't know, he could have been working and still chasing the comedic we can dream. Say, we can just use him at the beginning. He's putting out skits. That's fine. I'm just, I'm just an example. He's putting out skits. Uh-huh. Some will go viral, some don't. Cool. He not really peaking right now. But you're not, not making, making money off of it. You're not making money off of it. He's not making, he, he, he not making no of money off of it, right? But it's his dream. That's fine. So now. All right, what else? Are, uh, you can have a dream and work. All right. Yeah. Are now, you, I agree with you on that. That's what I'm talking about. So with Desi, so saying, I, don't don't work, I, I just want to do these skits. I don't want to do yeah, don't that's chase what I'm, your dream you, and be broke though. Thank you. You can chase your dream, but you still got to bring something. To thank the you, BZ. But most, Hello? Of them, I agree with you. Most people feel like and no, that's, that's the, the only the reason. That's the only way I see a woman complaining if if you're chasing a dream with no, you're just not doing nothing else. Okay, so that's a, that's so another then, topic. Okay, though. like for instance, if you're chasing a dream, right, and I meet you year one of the dream chase, right? You just started up, you just got big, you just started popping with the skits, right? But you ain't working. But you doing you doing what you want to do? Let, matter of fact, let me give a better example. A rapper, perfect. Mm, I don't know. Yes, you chasing this rap okay. career. It's a good example. Okay, good you chasing example. this okay. rap career. I meet you. You doing videos every you day. Doing, you you doing studio, videos. You, you going you, to the studio. studio. You might be. You might be putting in no. He putting in the work, but it just ain't. But you might be a little. You might be a little drug. You, well, first off, you got to fund these studio sessions. Yeah. You got to fund these videos. So you might be a little drug dealer. Might be a dope boy. I can right. meet you at that moment, and you on year one and a half when I meet you. Mm-hmm. We get to year five. And you still rapping? Not even that you still rapping, but you still dope boy. And chasing and, and funding mo- videos and studio sessions, and we ain't with nowhere to try to go get us a real job for real. You can do it. You can do that rapping shit until it get to the point that you wanted to get to, or you can leave it alone. But this drug dealing money that you making just going straight to these dreams you chasing. Mm. How long you want me to continue to be with you and also be submissive because y'all niggas talk about submission so much and also be submissive to you but yeah yeah baby, yeah, baby i got it you got worry but i got it don't say nothing else. but it. you know what you know what ash i don't really think guys give women a timeline like i think we put ourselves on a timeline because yeah, niggas yeah. don't say i need you to wait six months or a year or they just five go for years how long you allow like, it to they go gonna let you see right but that's what i'm saying how long do you allow that but that's a, that's because if you. i stay 10 years and we still ain't made it nowhere that is that's a knock on me but it's because i love you so much i'm still here but you didn't have to stay there but long. i didn't know but i did not mm-hmm. but because i love you you I never stayed. gave me a timeline never said baby give me two years i'm gonna get together uh-huh. Honestly, I think in these situations you just got to be logical, right? You gotta be and, but you gotta and a be lot logical. of times when dreams come in effect, busy niggas ain't Look, sometimes no. may not be as logical as what they but, should. But they be. need to be because they, they should. Real shit is if because going, life is still life and, and curse, bills though. are still billing. Yeah, so and you, niggas may not be looking at it as that. You're right because if you're doing something at year one and then by year five, it's the it's still still the, it's still the same. It hasn't elevated in any see, way. No. Nothing's changed. If, right. if y'all want to be, if y'all want to talk, what if, you doing. If, if y'all want to talk real money shit, that's that's where I was at with Honeybee. Real shit. That's why Honeybee left. It got stagnant. Yeah, once it gets well, stagnant, what are we like, doing? It's no more. What am I doing? Now, granted, I wasn't no full time entrepreneur. Had I been, I'd have been on my ass, sick as fuck, because my business was mm-hmm. not climbing to the success that I felt it should climb to at year five. Mm-hmm. I had a job. I was realistic yeah, else, yeah. enough, but I remember I, I I I was talking to a guy and he gave me flack about being not being a full not being a real entrepreneur because I had a it's too, you can't. because I had a job plus I was doing mm-hmm. my side business and I was like bro like a bitch I put would, in, I'm gonna say this I will say if you're trying to be a full entrepreneur and then you have a job it's, it's a handicap it's not you know why why because you're not gonna go as hard as you really oh, no, would. Baby. Like, if you didn't have a job, you got to go. Like, when I lost my last job, that's what I had to do, bro. When I started going into the fitness world, I said, 
I can't get another job. I agree. So I, I gotta goddamn got you know. make if this I, shit work. But if I but if I didn't have a job, I had no way of funding my business. You would have found a way. So oh, busy. Okay. So busy. You don't. You don't. How do you feel about like when they say the average millionaire has seven streams of income? Mm-hmm. Like. Damn right. Did, yeah. Right. So, so, what, so what's wrong with me having a job? Yeah. So it's a what's wrong with a nine to five? No, no, I don't feel different. like that's a handicap. That's different. Most people that have seven streams of income is really one business that's no, it's getting not. seven business. No. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a prime example. It's, it's like a funnel. It's, 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 it's like me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking about me. So I have a podcast. I can I can make money seven ways off of this podcast. That's seven streams of income. Whether it's through Instagram, uh, audio. That's uh, not. That's not. Whatever you got, know what I'm saying. Niggas, niggas do. Niggas do. Yeah, niggas do trading. Nick, that's. It's so many different type of ways of income. So that's why I felt the knock at because I'm like, you're telling me because I got a nine to five, I don't put in the effort for my business when I could be in my nine to five doing honeybee the entire nine to five, but that nine to five paying for. My honey be dream. There's nothing wrong with having nine to five. I just think that most times when people have a job and an entrepreneurship dream they're chasing, they just they just tend to uh put more time into the job than they do they their own business. They're gonna work I twelve a, hours and then come home and do spend two see, hours I, on their business. See, I That's had backwards. A, I had a motive. I, I knew what I wanted to do, but I needed the money for it to fund. I didn't want to get the credit cards, yeah. I didn't want to get the loans, I didn't want to get the business. I wanted to be able to get that money in my hand and flip it this way. Or do it for over a set amount. So I worked nine to five, but worked on Honeybee while I was working my nine to five. Yeah, you, you gotta fund it. So, so I didn't I didn't leave the nine to five because I needed that money to fund or funnel my business like I wanted it to. Now, granted, maybe my business may have had more magnitude than I thought, but as far as the revenue in, I seen what was coming in on my end. People don't see it. People seen it on social media and was like, Snook, like, why are you getting rid of Honeybee? Like, this shit yeah. is, you know is a pop. On. But I'm like, y'all don't see what I'm doing on I, the back I, end. I, I, I'm I, up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning packaging I, orders, up till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning brainstorming content. And and creator's block is a thing. When you get in the creator's mm, block mind, That's it's real. hard. Well, so I was you. just saying, um, Say like, when it comes to the, sh- the seven seven streams of income or any kind of income i think that we pay sometimes we pay so much attention to if it does this align with what i'm doing you know i teach pre-k and i'm here at this podcast every single sunday now granted we don't we're not bringing in like major streams of income but i feel like if you're following something that is in alignment with what you're interested in and and what you can potentially have income in then that's something that you follow and that's something that you you pour into and you can potentially have income from because you never know what kind of skill sets you're building that can feed into your top three or your top two um, sources of income. Like with Ashley's business, like Ashley might, you know, she'll build skills on this podcast and be able to talk. And that might transfer to talking about hair businesses or talking to hey, other entrepreneurs. That's what I told her. Yeah. That, that are in that, within that same industry. So um, I didn't. I wasn't even listening to what y'all were talking about. No, but I was I'm just on that same, you. on that same thing of like, because you said like, if you're in the film industry, yeah, you can have several funnels of income within the same industry. But I was just saying to Joe, like sometimes it do, it doesn't always have funnel. to match. Yeah, sometimes correlate. it doesn't always no, funnel no, in that same match. kind of way. No, it ain't got to match. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I mean, honestly, being diverse and diversifying yourself in any kind of any kind of industry is 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 worth everything. So that's yeah. all we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I I do think if, if I, I mean. I, Evidently, we know everybody get on club, Shay Shay. We don't know if we can believe everything that everybody's saying these days. Some shit might be. Uh, oh, I know. ain't about Dizzy. I just want to say, as far as when you women, like, it's. I know it's hard because you want your life to be a certain way. You want you want you 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 don't want to have to worry about stuff. You can't be. Uh, what's the word? You can't be naive. No, no, no. You can't be feminine unless you feel like you're being taken care of. So, a lot of that go out of the window when you're not when the guy's not making money. You don't feel like you can be your your most feminine self when you got to worry about soft shit. girl. You can't be that. your soft girl air if you got to worry about the light skin page. I don't think so. 
I was just saying. The what? The, the lights. Paid. Electrical. Light oh, lights being paid. Yeah. That's what I said. This nigga said light skin fades. I said your lights getting paid. Oh, um, no. Nah. Oh, um, lights are getting paid. So we, this, I can't be with you, and you just it's a funnel, you just it's, chasing it's, you just chasing a motherfucking dream. Right though, and you can't and you don't need to be in a relationship if you broke. I agree with that. Absolutely. So that it comes down That's to a it. Given. And on top of that, we see it all day that women don't like broke niggas. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say niggas can't have dreams and this can't be doing all this and you, say and complain. Yes, you when can't have it both ways. You gotta make no it money. gotta make sense, it nigga. Gotta, no, I agree. It gotta you make can't sense. be broke chasing the dream. Yeah. You just can't. Nah, they real. They real. You just can't hope the dream fall out your motherfucking lap right. unless you the nigga off of Acrimony building some shit from fucking scratch. Period. <laughs> like you, you just can't think that your dreams are gonna fall out the sky. Somebody gonna hand you a, a handout, and, and that's what happens. Those type of niggas that 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 bitches stay down for and want to be with. Now it's on. It, she takes just as much accountability as he does. Those type of niggas think that somebody gonna get him the handout mm -hmm. and be like, you know what? I think you'd be a great guy. But them be the same type of niggas that get burned. Just in, let's just talk about musical rapper mm -hmm. sense. You might fuck around and do a showcase, and nigga hit you with, oh yeah, I think you're a great dude. I think you'll you make a lot of money with the whoop. Now you you geek. Cause you think you finna get that, you finna get that deal, and then that deal fuck around and be some 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 full gaze ass shit to where they just funny you to do a damn uh video. Don't none of that shit come to you. Then all that money that you make off of that song that then popped goes to all the motherfuckers that gave you that loan. Mm -hmm. Now you back broke. Oh, so right. I just think it gotta be. You have while. to be. You got to be logical. It, it just gotta be logical. At this grown sense. ass age, if you're not, and you gotta know who you dealing with. And you gotta know you're doing well. If you ain't 20, 19, 18. Hey, you can't make you can't do no risk taking. If, and those well, are the those, times. Those are when you're supposed to be risk taking. Yeah. You can't be 30 trying to make risk. You can't do that. Oh bro. man, you got you got to be more. You yeah, can't you take be risk realistic. at 30. I think, I think no, in regards when, when to when you're when you're when you're in your twenties, these are when you need to be taking your risk. You need to be I'll take risk every day. Well no I risk, no story. Mean, I but, think he but, means what, monetary in regards to monetary risk. Yeah, uh, but it gotta make sense. Uh, yeah, no risk, no make, story, make, no risk, no reward. To make risk without thinking about a penalty in your early twenties is more feasible and more understandable. You still young, yeah. you still trying to navigate through life. By your thirties, you know what's gonna work and what really ain't gonna work. So logically, you would think more about the risk that you are gonna take. You're yeah. not just, you just gonna, gonna instantly take it. that risk. Yeah, gonna just, yeah. You don't have the more risk thought have behind thought. the risk that's being yeah, yeah that's being right. taken. You're right. You're right. Took. Yeah. Yeah. But in your in your from from seventeen, I mean eight seventeen, eighteen to up to like twenty five, twenty six, you might be doing some very impulsive ass risk taking, mm. picking all your shit up and just going to a whole nother city with just you out there. Yeah. Well, some people do that at thirty two, but but I mean, I think with I think when you're a little bit older, a lot of times people in their thirties may have a family that they just can't pick up and do that for. At thirty, maybe your parents are older and you may have to be able to take care of your parents, so you can't. Mm, well, mm. a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I just can't pick up and go I like I like I could have in my twenties. Yep. 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 So. I got you. Yeah. BC, you got something for you for BC's corner? Make time. <laughs> Make time, man. Um, a lot of people. When I say make time, I mean make time for your health, right? Because mm. a lot of people, um, they, they make so much time for money, and they always say they don't have time to go to the gym. They don't got time to work out. But you got to understand that making time for the gym is the only thing that's going to give you more time. Mm. So, um, mm. Don't let it go over your don't head. Let that, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> don't let that go over your head, I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Making time for the gym is the only thing that's going to give you more time, yeah. mm. all right? So stop putting health on the back burner because you can make all this money, but get what? You be sick as hell. Get what? Ain't no motherfucking uh, money truck behind no hearse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't take <laughs> back to back with them. Huh? I'm just being real. I kind of yeah. hear this shit every day, but like, that's real. Motherfuckers be telling me that they want to work out, and they want to start their fitness journey, but they're like, damn, man, I just don't got time to do it. Uh, you can wake up an hour early, or you can go to sleep an hour later every day. To goddamn, it's 24 hours in a day. 
you can make time. I don't give a fuck if it's an hour. One hour. Two hours. An hour, out. 30 minutes, whatever it is, to start your fitness journey, bro. Mm-hmm. And that's going to that's gonna give you more time. I'm just saying. Stop stop putting health on the back burner, man. Like, you chasing all that money, chasing all the other shit, and putting your health last. Man, I don't seen too many motherfuckers die in their 30s in the last two years, bro. Mm. In their 30s. and Some in their 20s, too. And get what they had money, though. But they didn't have health. But it didn't go nowhere with them. They had money, but they didn't have wealth. Yeah. And the real wealth is in the health. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh. <laughs> is this microphone on? Pass the collection yeah. plate, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, for real, make time for yourself, man. Straight up. All right, y'all. Please, we say this every week. Look, if y'all got any questions, anything I want to talk about, please DM us at Unspoken ATL. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Look, y'all rocking with the best show in Atlanta. We appreciate y'all for pulling up this episode eight. We'll talk to y'all next time, man. Be easy. Peace. I got on my little Hispanic, my little Hispanic uh shadow and told him, I said, you come and see Miss Butler every day and you give me hell every week. You ain't wanna give me no Valentine's Day gift. Mm. He told me, I got you some. And gave me a tried to give me a fucking snicker. I said, Miss Miss Butler is allergic to peanuts. Huh? That's wild. You must wanna kill me. <laughs> is she still going? A little bit. I do wanna hit it, but it's too far. <laughs> she out. She out. She's a fiend. <laughs> we all are though. That's all we need to talk about what Money Long said about them hookahs. What'd she say? We don't need to be smoking them, especially no. especially not indoors. She said that. She said what we if we at the club and we smoke a hookah. She said we ain't doing nothing but breathing in carbon monoxide. She Are said you, you shouldn't even have plastic. It was just I said, bitch, I didn't need to see this. Yeah, it's real. She said like you know she's just talking about the middle you know the the Middle Easterns who of course do it and they've been doing it for years. And they know their their shisha isn't tobacco based. It's like molasses mm-hmm. shisha. Um, and she was like, you know, the wooden tips. Like, you yeah. know, when you see the hook, hookahs with the wooden tips, yeah. them are the ones that you should be smoking out of. And when you smoke hookah, you should smoke it like on a rooftop or outside because we could just go somewhere. First, she and then she was like the plastic tips make it even worse. I don't really That's know. That's why like, a lot of new spots um, they got ventilation for that now. But like they got shit to suck it up. Like oh, my, really? my homegirl just opened a spot, and uh, what well, she bought open spot, and they had she had to spend like an extra ten thousand just for like ventilation for the hookahs, because that is the thing. Really? I don't really smoke like that, like that no more. Every now and then. Let okay, me smoke it. Yeah, girl. Hey, you ain't have to throw my hookah down like that. Though. <laughs> my Hold sister. that gag.